pertain to belong to be the property right or duty of mm. he took the fortified cities which pertain to judah oh to have relation let me ask you a question if you got a relationship with somebody does that mean that you are that somebody you know what i'm saying uh, if you have a relationship if if a has a relationship with B, does it make A B? If B has relations or a relationship with A, does it make B A? Or do they just have a relation? You can have a relation with somebody <laughs> and not really have a whole lot pertaining, you know, a whole lot in common, you know what I'm saying? A relationship, you know, they could be real loose relationships, real loose, you know. Top battle got me popping off, oh, man. I mean. You know, she over there in a copper thread going cray cray, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just looking up the word Jewish. You know what I mean? We just got pertaining to, you know. We're, they have relations to the Hebrew. You know, there's a relationship uh, that we are investigating, right? This is an investigation of ourselves. See, when Kanye say he's going DEFCON 3, on the ish and then he also says that he himself in his words is Jewish Kanye say he Jewish he is a Jew he's of the tribes of uh, you know Jacob Abraham Isaac so him going DEFCON 3 on Jewish when he is saying he's Jewish or the Jew, or the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, we're just talking about an alert, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the armed forces, the armed forces <laughs> use this as an alert. When you're on DEFCON 3, you have increased in force readiness above that required for normal readiness so you're not quite at that kind of one <laughs> cocked pistol you're not at the fast pace you know because you're about to pop off 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 you know you're right here at the roundhouse you know what i'm saying <laughs> you've increased your force readiness if easy say he's going depcon three on his own people because he's calling himself Jewish or Jew. And he's telling his people to be ready more than normal readiness. So we're, it's a free country. We're entitled to our opinions. You can't force everybody's mind to be a hive, robotic hive mind. If somebody doesn't agree, they get ostracized, they get banned, they get canceled. I mean, how long you think they're going to let, you know, um, <laughs> Drop Nation pop off like we popping off on their platform? So, allow Hawaii for 432, the Drop Radio, and all the other platforms, man. That's, we all, all our, our family seeing that we got to do for us. We got to have our own platforms. We got to have our own everything, clothes, music. You know, all this we're doing, you know, our stories, our books, our our movies, our, our our images, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we see has to, you know, come through Nagaville. We can't allow uh, them to take offense when we are readying our own people. You know, now we can't have an opinion about it. And, you know. Yeah, he's talking to specific people, and they're going crazy. Oh, you're threatening the entire race. He's saying threatening. Oh, my goodness. Whew. I hope it's, you know, if that's if that's what you're going crazy off of, I'm going off of history. You're talking about threats. I'm talking about genocide on a level you can't equate to. And we can't even talk about our genocide 
can't ask questions about who we are after being enslaved and, you know, as prisoners of war. The prisoner can't come back into consciousness, awareness, and ask aware questions like, how did we get here? Who owned those slave boats? Who's stealing our identity? Are we a homeborn slave? Or are we the Hebrews? Will Con David rise again? <laughs> Jeremiah 30, verse 9. We might want to be more ready than usual, my naga. You know, if you get nothing else from the yay, <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, um, message, you know what I mean, whatever you want to call it, you know, just take the readiness. Say, if anything else, I'm just going to be more ready than normal. You got all kind of strange events happening. Uh, I know there's an earthquake popping up. I mean, we don't know what's happening, but it's all in the wise plan. You know, we just getting some warning signs. Death country, man. Yeah, I'm just digging on dictionaries, man. So, Yeezy trying to tell us, as Hebrews, to be ready more than usual. They take it and say, you're talking about us. You're talking about the Jewish. We say, you're pertaining to us. When I have this conversation, I know it's a tough conversation, but you can't ban us from having a real sensible conversation about our roots. And if you got Ethiopian Jews in your synagogue today, Falasha Jews rep recognized today, can walk through Israel today as Falasha, even if they're still being persecuted. You can't tell us that the Hebrew ain't us. And that you came to America, the land of the Khan, and you found the Khans. Yeah, you looking for Prester John. Put it all in the equation. We see clearly. We done been there. Now we just doubling back. We spinning the block. <laughs> we spinning the ether block, man. All right. So there's no real definition here other than pertaining to Hebrews. And when we just put in Jew, it's... A contraction of Judas of Judah. This ain't no New Test Judas. We're talking about what? Maccabees? We're talking about the Maccabees? It's a whole lot of righteous, you know, valiant, mighty Judas of Judah. Because Judah is Judah. Judas is Judah. The New Test, they got some turncoat Judas. And now everybody Judas got to be some turncoat. Some hijack. <laughs> Say, man, dodge all hijacks at all costs. Shout out to Judas Maccabeus. Man, straight up, shout out to Judah. So if Jew, it's just Judah, my naga, we just, we just having a conversation. We just investigating the same thing we've been doing for over seven years. Right here, man. Right here. Shout out to the wave service. My real nagas, my patient nagas, you know, as we... Um, you know, man, just continue to connect all our frequencies, man. You know, my nuggets just know how to serve the wave with us and allow us to grow, you know, give us plenty, you know, space to operate and, and just, you know, keep the code, you know, keep, keep the code with the nuggets. All we ever ask, man, <laughs> just keep the code with the nuggets, man. Make a contract with Hawa, not me, not us. Make a contract with Hawa, keep the code. Then you my eye. That's all it is, because this Jew business is just Judah, right? So are you claiming to be Judah, or are you in the tents of Judah? You know, what is a Semite? Doesn't exist in 1828. It's the Noah Webster Dictionary. What is Semitic, man? No Semitic? Is there a Shem? Oh, a Shemitic. Ain't that something? So when they say anti-Semitic, 
it's really shimetic because there is no semitic. Let's try again. Semitic. You can't just make up words, bro. Y'all can't just be making up words that don't even exist in your dictionary in the 1800s. Now you made up a word in the last hundred or so years and you're hanging people, lynching people in public, trying to buck break a nigga. Shout out to Ye. Shout out to Kyrie. Now, these are just the times when you just got to witness, man. You can't just throw the babies out with the bathwater and say, no, distraction, distraction. What if what if all of this is a distraction? What can you get out of it? All we're talking about is who you are. We ain't distracted. We still on code. Ain't I saying keep the code? Where's the, where's the distraction of me saying to keep the code? Why? Because they're telling you this is all a game. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. <laughs> Rest in power, notorious. Man, look, this is just a game. This is what they all saying. Yay, saying they trying to destroy me in this game. They're breaking the rules in this game. Kyrie's been playing basketball his whole life, training, dedicated to feed his family. And, you know, feed his tribe. They want to buck break that nigga, man. Make a nigga say. He said, I take responsibility for anybody that got an issue, man, whatever, man. But all I did was drop a link to my people. I'm on my platform dropping a link. All I did was drop a link. I didn't say one way or the other. Well, we want you to identify exactly what you agree with and exactly what you disagree with, Kyrie. We want you to say, I'm sorry, Kyrie. Why? I just said I take responsibility. But how can I be sorry for something I didn't cause? If you took something the wrong way, you take something. If somebody, if, if come why not? If Quentin Tarantino can do Kill Bill <laughs> and, and, you know what I'm saying, Pulp Fiction, and don't give a shit who he offends while he does it, you saying Kyrie can't drop a link to a documentary that's on a platform owned by Bezos, Amazon Prime. Kyrie didn't invent the documentary. Kyrie doesn't have a platform airing the documentary. He found a link and said, hey, this could be interesting to some people. Have you seen this? He didn't even say that. He just dropped the link. He just dropped the link. And I'm asking you, man, can they just make up words all of a sudden? <laughs> All he did was drop a link, man. And now they want, and I'm sorry, or you're kicked off the team and you're kicked off a of Nike and we're going to ruin your life, Kanye. You're not a billionaire no more. We got our own brothers like Shaquille saying, hey, man, I got more money than you. Listen to me. Making fun of the fact that he's taking L's. Why? Because he wants to call out, you know, those that are, being adversaries to him personally. If an innocent white lady gets uh, slapped in the head by a black lady, a black lady, <laughs> so-called black, and then she says, all right, maybe that was just isolated. And then the next day she gets slapped again by a black lady. And then another time, and then it's 10 days in a row, all black ladies slap her in the face. She has a right to say, man, these black motherfuckers is crazy. I don't like these people. They Every day they slap me in the face. If Kanye's doing business with who, uh, Mr. Green, and then he, he, he gets, you know, sh he gets shanked in the, in a deal, he gets shysted in a deal, and then he does another business with somebody named Mr. Green, and everybody that keeps doing him over his name, Mr. Green, he's gonna say, these green people is freaking atrocious. Now I'm saying, you know, Ice Cube said it perfectly. I'm gonna identify the imposter or the perpetrator. Just like y'all say, oh, 
uh, three black males, you know, uh, attempted to do this. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, five black uh, uh, students. Y'all love identifying us. The perpetrators are always, yeah, a tall black male, six feet, black male, black male, black woman. But then you get identified even though you wanted to be separate, right? You don't like to, even though you might identify as white, you don't like to call yourself white. You call yourself a semi, right? You're different. So someone has to identify you specifically. They can't just say white, man, when you don't call yourself white, although you might identify as white. Yeah, drop nation, look. I already know, man. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure I save this video. <laughs> this one might have to come out on the next Eat the Pack, man. Cause we about to go in. Fair use. We're going to see a bunch of clips. I'm going to just go in. On, you know, we're just going to have a good time. This is Yeezy Discourse Part 4. This is Kyrie, a Kyrie special. You know, we touched on it last time, but this one's dedicated to Kyrie specifically and Yeezy as well. But, you know, we're going to go in on this, you know, what they doing to the bro. He can't play basketball. He he gets dropped from what he thought was a great deal, Nike, a great brand, Nike. But love to Five Eyes Ma, Ma Jigga, Nike is a Greek guy. So we over here caring about these gods, rocking these gods. We rocking them. Nah, we rocking MHOE. Most over everything. There's a reason why they want you to, you know, rock and wear their gods. That means we got to wear our power. We got to wear our customs. It's, it's power in our dress. It's power in our garments. We got to wear our power. There ain't no Semitic. How can we be anti-Semitic <laughs> unless you're talking Shem? And how can we be anti-Shem when we are Shem? We're the Shemites you found in America pertaining, belonging, relating to Shem. There ain't no Semitic. This is a made-up word that they can hide under these vernacular tents and publicly lynch whoever they want. And then say that's the ultimate crime. They don't care about the hate crimes on our people. Every time we remind them, they just say, no, yeah, but how could you offend such people? As if you got some track record of, of paradise. We've been doing this a long time, Drive Nation. Top battle, take the wheel. Take the wheel, Aqua Top Battle. So there ain't no Semitic. Uh, you can't be anti-Semitic. You can't be anti-Shem if you are Shem. And that's exactly what we heard Yeezy say over and over again. Exactly what Kyrie has said. I can't be against my people. And if I drop something, if I drop a link, it's for my people. How many links have we dropped? Why did we drop it? For our people. But he, just because he plays, just because he's a hooper, a professional hoop or hoop artist, <laughs> He can't drop a link. He got to worry about who this link offends. But if it was all gangsta, gangsta, gangsta stuff, all against the Negro, they wouldn't care about that and call him anti-Negro, man. They wouldn't be calling him anti-Semitic, that's for sure. Because they don't want to correlate the Semite with the Shemite with the Naga right here in Nagaville. It's the land of David. It's the land of Queen Khalifa, Queen Sheba. Man, you must be thoughtless. This the old world. This is why we got Kalelu's artifacts with Hebrew and dragons on the swords. You know you didn't wield them swords. You know you weren't wielding them swords. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about the Israelite, right? You know you weren't wielding them swords in Calais loose. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Because remember, it's this or that, right? It's pertaining. 
to the Jews or Hebrews. So whose swords did those belong to in Arizona with Hebrew on them dated back to 600 AD, 700 AD in America? Those are Hebrew artifacts. You saying these people were holding those swords in America, Jack, and they ain't claiming them? Because then they got to claim to be the native. And you can't roll up on yourself and slave ships, man. <laughs> it's a body bag for the illusion. These are Hebrew swords. The gig is up. The jig is up. We're talking Jew or Judah. Jew or Judah. Let's go. Let's go, man. Shout out to all my noggers in the drop drop chatter, man. Always giving Ahab Shabbat Shalawam Ma. Hey, I like that, man. Ahab, Annie, how we are. JL says this is so good. Man, he must be surfing the wave, man. Right now, we're in a Coronado expedition. So you can always get some books right on your head, bone. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let's go. My jigger. Yeah, my jigger popping off. I had no idea. I thought I was reading some Coronado books, but this is what we do, man. It's only the way, man. Cop fat, what it do? Always dropping that drop. Yeah, we got to dig on, you know, you know, we like to get mappy around here, man. We found this David flow, man. And we just talking Texas history, man. It looks like they got some explaining to do, man. <laughs> ka ka, like the water, my eye. Ka fat, man. All the, all the nuggets popping off. Top battle bed popping off. Moonboy popping off. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, uh, all my uh I appreciate you, man, checking in. Always uh, making sure we are on track and off on point, man, as we get on point. You know what I'm saying? And get our wall of protection on point. I can't wait to get to the pink, the blue, the red, the purple, you know, the white linen, gold, the thread. And just to see what the droplets do, you know what I'm saying, popping off. You know, so everything you are dropping, Ahab, Anthony, Largy, Zion, Trey, Brendan, Savala, Dawi, A, all my anonymous Naga, Dylon, Davidson, all my Nagas. You know, this is all going towards our materials and supplies to keep building this beautiful fence, man. You know what I'm saying? Popping off, you know. And you, though. The The wood. Love to the droppers. They've been active, man, on this seal, man. Getting it. You know, we want to make sure we preserve the work. You know what I mean? Either way, you're going to have to replace pickets and replace things. You know what I mean? But if you could preserve it as long as you can. Hey, uh, so we got to pick up right here. <laughs> and then we'll finish this bar. Somebody got started over here already. And we're going to wrap around my naga, the longest cedar wood fence in Utah. Welcome to the longest cedar wood fence. <laughs> Most level fence in Utah. The cons already popping off. Yeah, wow. Naga view. It's all happening, man. It's all happening.
Con up, hey, out to the tribe. You already know. See how we do. <laughs> That's a lot of work, my Nagas. My Nagas popping off in real time, man. A lot of materials, my Nagas. We done dead it again. All right, my Nagas. So long way to go. You next. You up next. That's right. Who, who next, you know, my man? My Nagas got hands. Y'all been hitting the Nagas like, you know, I drop, I got hands. You know what I'm saying? I, I rock with this. I rock with that. You know, I do electric work. I do solar panels. I do, you know, uh, contracting. You know, all that. So please continue to hit us up. Music at 432thedrop.com. Music at 432thedrop.com. Let go. Or 432thedrop at Gmail. You know what I mean? And uh, let us know what it is. You know, and we'll keep... Woo! We'll keep the resources, you know, flowing and connecting. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Hey, my Nuggets, we, we did it again, man. You know, so we're constantly planning our, you know, fence team trips. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we, you know, just go with a a few noggins, sometimes we got a lot of noggins, so, you know what I'm saying, we just like to work around, everybody's, you know, schedule is not easy, you know what I'm saying, to take days off of this, and, you know, the gas prices ain't cheap, you know what I'm saying, so, all your, uh, all your contribution helps my noggins get there, helps us with materials, making sure we're eating healthy, and everybody's strong, and whatever else noggins need, room and board, as we, uh, you know, Make sure we're sheltered and, and building, man, you know, in, in good in good frequency, man. So this has been truly a dream come true. Uh, you know, we started with a $10,000 goal. We surpassed that. We moved it to twenty because we saw these materials are going up, and we still got a long way to go. So the water for your contribution. This is our tribal fence building, wall building exercise. And it's just for us to learn how to build together and to continue to, you know, have the same you know, Mark, man, you know what I'm saying, to build Nagaville, who knows what we'll be able to utilize with this great space for our community. And, uh, you know, we got MHLE, we got all kind of things we want to do, man, get our, our workshop popping off, our studio, have a 432 to drop radio station, <laughs> have all our flow, man, have shelter for the tribe. So, you know, it's only the beginning. We're just getting flowing the water for your contribution for Nagaville, a lot of why. To the cons, man. Let's go, man. Fair use in your caboose. We're going straight in. Section 107, Copyright Act, uh, statutory framework, determining whether something is fair use, identify certain types of fair use, such as criticism, comments, news report, teaching, scholarship, and recon, man. All right, man. I got to read it, man. You know what I mean? Because they go crazy. Because we about to go crazy. Now, you know, if you've been surfing the wave at 432 to drop on IG, yeah, make sure you tuned up, man, because, you know, a lot of my knockers is popping off right there. And I love reposting great knowledge and great vibration throughout the day. And, yeah, uh, we just talked about shemetic, right? Right. So, you know, obviously, so when you see semitic, we know that that's a new word variation of shem, shemetic. We talked about the negus. The title of the ruler of Abyssinia, Abyssinia is the name of Ethiopia, right? It's the uh, uh, progenitor, you know, it predates Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a Greek word. Abyssinia meant mixed multitude, which connects you more to the Moshe flow. Obviously, you got the mixed multitude, Israelites, Medianites. You got different tribes that are choosing up. You got the Negus. Right. So, you know, it's a hard, I don't know, you know, it's not even a hard, it's, 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 it's an interesting question when it comes up, especially from your drops. It's like, yo, what is the word nigga mean? You know what I'm saying? You describe it as naga, you talk about the goose, but this is a great way to break it down. You know, the neg goose is the king or the queen, you know what I'm saying? Stemming from naga sha. So the nega stems from the naga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So what kind of king? We're talking dragon king, man. He forced, he ruled. So the nigga is the negus or the naga. The naga, even in Hebrew, you got the noon and you got the ga. The ga means to gather. The noon is the seed. So it is a seed gathering king. A king that gathers the seed. A priest king. Ka. 
Ethiopian, Semitic, Ethiosemitic. So why can't Kanye say he's Semitic and they say, oh, okay, so what you meant was you're going DEFCON 3 on your people. Right. He's like, yeah, my people. Yeah. Nah, they can't say that because then it changes the narrative. It, it destroys the narrative because you're putting that dragonfly perspective on it. You're shining a light on a simple truth. <laughs> Man. You know, they say, uh, you know, some people say, you know, how can, how can uh, we as a people be Israelites or the tribes of Israel or Hebrews if, you know, the people predates the Bible, right? The people predates the Bible. Managa, the people predate all these works. All these books are predated by the original people. The The writing came later. So you're going to have to dis, discard all your books then. Or are you saying that these books don't have no, no, uh, no truth? Then you're going to have to prove, you know, or disprove, you know, this is what we've been doing, investigating. So we know there's truth in the so-called Bible. We just got to break it down with a dragonfly perspective and connect it with our indigenous truth. And yes, us as indigenous predate, you know, these translations of the Bible, but the manuscripts is the original ones that, you know, King, King Charles and, you know, King James was getting, you know, we don't know how far those go back. You know, we're talking about when the lands were connected, we're talking about Lemuria, we're talking about, you know, pre-Atlantis, you know, we don't know. So what we don't know, we don't know, but we know this baby's in the bathwater. We got to get Moshe out the bathwater, man. We got to rescue Moses, the babies. So this baby's in the Quran, this baby's in the Bible, this baby's in the Tanakh. All this has been retranslated. All these require writers to write and perspectives to be added. But the code is a simple frequency. They can't invent the code because they're not pushing the code on the Negro people in our communities. They're not coming to our communities telling us, put no power before the creator. Are they? They're not coming into our neighborhood saying, don't bear vanity on your breath of security. Don't kill your brother. Don't steal from your brother. Don't bear false witness on your naga. They're not coming into our communities, but they can sit front row courtside with fight anti-Semitism shirts and stare at him with their goofy ass faces. Knowing damn well they can't dribble a basketball. Knowing damn well they ain't got no coordination. Knowing damn well they can't wield these swords of the Nagas and Nagaville, the Ibaru, while they taught this Hebrew with their money, with their rich courtside money, just to taunt the Hebrew man. This looks like Hijack City if I ever seen one, man. Matter of fact, I gotta take a screenshot. I got to take a screenshot. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I gotta put the Nagoose in it, man. <laughs> Damn. I mean, just look at this, man. But this is the king. He said he got an army. He means it. Our own people going to taunt him. Where's your army? Where's your army? He's talking about the creator, the creator's army, the same army you claim to, you know, be rocking with in Sunday church. He's rocking. He's keeping the Shabbat. You know what I'm saying? He's a Semitic. He's a Semite. He can't be anti-Semitic. He's the Naga. He's the Negus, the Ethiopian, the Abyssinian. Afro-Asiatic. <laughs> so the Afro-Asiatics are Shem. We can't be anti-Shem. This is what Ye was saying. Is he crazy? This is what Kyrie been saying. But unless he says, I'm sorry, he can't dribble the basketball in this uniform, in this arena. I think we got to wake up, man, and say, yo, if we don't do for us, we have no future. We can't let them lynch our people publicly like this. And yeah, 
there's a disconnect because we're like, oh, he got all this money, but he's sacrificing, <laughs> he's sacrificing some of that for this. Crazy Kanye is sacrificing money for this. You better listen to this message, man. <laughs> he's taking an L for for a message. Let's go. Y'all ready? Let's go, man. We out. We out. <clears throat> so, first one I went to even try to rent this thing, uh, it wasn't even playing. So, they, you know, I guess they took it down, then they put it back up. I got a little clip up, man, you know, fair use. You know, I want to belly flop in this, but, you know, uh, I'm just going to surf the wave. You know, like I said, I'm prepared to have this already backed up, this video already saved because I might only be able to drop it on the pack, man, because <laughs> I'm going in, whatever, man. All right, we just popping off, man. So uh, let's see what they saying here, man. Again, fair use in your caboose. Oh, yeah. This is what the young turns back to the TYT. Fair use in your caboose, you know. Fair use. You know, I don't know, you know. We just doing some comments and some criticisms. You know, don't trip. Maybe some teaching. Maybe some research. We just investigating. Let's see what TYT got to say, and let's see which which brother <laughs> is looking like us. Are they gonna? Sit now, because we got Stephen A., you got Shannon Sharp, you got all these brothers hating Kyrie. They just hate him, and their financiers are loving it while he wears a Nike. <laughs> Come on, man. With the eagles, the eagle trying to devour the dragon. Can y'all see it, man? Woo! Can you see it? Let's go. Is ...to grow. Uh, the new uh, the Brooklyn Nets now have decided to suspend him for five games now without pay wow. over his promotion of an anti-Semitic book and documentary. He said out his own mouth, this ain't no promotion. I'm just dropping a link for anyone who's interested in getting any, any information, man. This is to my people. It's not me. You know what a promotion is, man? That's when you're actually like, hey, go see this. This is great. You got to see it. It's the greatest. He's not promoting it by sharing a link. He's sharing information. He asked the reporter, don't you share information all the time? Don't you have talking topics all the time? Does that mean you're promoting every topic that you're talking about because you are sharing information? Or are you just sharing information? But they use the same talking point. <sighs> this is what they send in on us now. Send us against ourselves to make us devour our own tail. Because only the dragon can devour itself. Without pay over his promotion of an anti-Semitic book and documentary, over his refusal to apologize, explain, talk about it in any kind of meaningful way. So let's get into what this was first before we get into these punishments. Last week, Irvin posted a link on Twitter to the film Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America, which is driven by anti-Semitic tropes about Jewish people living a lying about their origins. It's false and outlandish claims about Jews include the assertion that the Holocaust never happened. There's lots in this, but that's not the only thing. The synopsis on Amazon said that the film uncovers the true identity of the children of Israel. Here's an image of uh, a promo, I guess a flyer for that, uh, for that documentary there. Right. The book version includes a laundry list of industries from banking to book publishing that European Jews allegedly dominate before stating, using control of our money, in the mass media, the European Jews gained control of our thinking elsewhere. Ah, uh, man, so to have an opinion based on historical fact, is that something worth labeling anti this or anti that? What part of it cannot be confirmed? And if someone is in an industry and they're speaking up on it, they're you know, given um, their relations to the topic, why do we have to, you know, assume that everything they're saying is false or is it worth investigating? Again, they're giving up a lot to pass this message. If this is the message they're passing, is it worth looking into or do you just dismiss it right away and say, hey, it's, uh, you know, just a bunch of, uh, you know, farce, you know, false this, um, you know, conspiracy that. You know what I'm saying? We're just looking at these talking points and, you know, 
let's see how he tries to relate this, you know what I mean, to what is true and what Kyrie said and what is completely being made up right before our eyes. Let's go. Elsewhere, the book refers to the, quote, Jewish-controlled news media. Uh, a bunch of things you never heard of before, I'm sure. Not, not, none of those things have ever been mentioned before. I mean, this is brand new stuff. Kyrie is teaching everyone about it, though. But last night, the Nets said in their statement when they... Man, they just got a bunch of jokey jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, we heard it all before. Now he's teaching. Just look in his eyes, man. Just take a minute. Look him in his eyes, man. You trust these eyes, man? These are eyes of a destroyer. <laughs> These are eyes of destruction, man. He wants to destroy the image of someone who has built a legacy. And we got someone who's built no legacy happy to destroy an entire legacy. Whether we're talking Kanye, whether we're talking Kyrie, they've built legacies. Empires. <laughs> Everybody rocking the Kyries. Come on, man. And it's so easy to bring down and make your little jokey joke. Let's let's hear this little jokey joke one more time, man. Maybe I missed it, man. Maybe it was a funny jokey joke. Let's go. Sure, not, not, not none of those things that have been mentioned before. I mean, this is brand new stuff. Kyrie is teaching everyone about it though. Uh, this is brand new stuff. We never heard this before. What does it say? A laundry list of industries. We're, we're talking about what this tribe of people happen to be invested in, right? Banks to book publishing. The European Jews allegedly dominate before stating using control of our money in the mass media. The European Jews gain control of our thinking. Elsewhere in the book refers to their control of the news media. Well, they seem to be controlling this spin. It seems to be right down the current of mainstream thought, narration, control. And here's his joke. For I mean, this is brand new stuff. Kyrie is teaching everyone about it, though. Bang. But last night, the Nets said in their statement when they were suspending Kyrie, by the way, this has been a week long of this kind of drama before they finally suspended him. This is what they said. We're dismayed today when given an opportunity in a media session that Kyrie refused to unequivocally say he has had no anti-Semitic beliefs nor acknowledge specific hateful material in the film. This was not the first time he had the opportunity, but failed to clarify. He continued, such a failure to disavow anti-Semitism when given a clear opportunity to do so is deeply disturbing, is against the values of our organization and constitutes conduct detrimental to the team. And accordingly, we are of the view that he is currently unfit to be associated with the Brooklyn Nets. That sounds like he's on his way out. Now, people are questioning whether or not this is the beginning of the end for Kyrie and after these five games, and especially since, which I also read from uh, uh, Wojnowski over on ESPN, he said this entire week of this drama, the, uh, the ownership and the general manager have been trying to reach out to Kyrie, and any kind of communication we've talked about from their connection to the ADL and talking about ways to uh, rectify this was all done through proxy people, not directly with Kyrie. He was not responding to folks within the organization. So uh, after all this did happen, after the suspension came down with no pay, he committed $500,000 to some groups to help fight against hate, all these things to push back, but not an apology or an explanation. He then finally had this over on Instagram. He says, Now listen very closely. This, is, this man's going to pour his heart out to the best of his ability, but it's not an apology. It's not enough for them. It's not enough to please this man. It's not enough to please those people. I take responsibility for posting that. Some things that were questionable in there, untrue. Like I said in the, fir uh, the first time when you guys were asking me, when I was sitting on that stage, I don't believe everything that everybody posts. It's a documentary. So I take my responsibility. This is the best he could do without completely being broken. You want him to break so you could pat him on the head, bone. You know, do a Nick Cannon flow to him, you know what I mean? He's saying, look, you ain't going to break me. Just like Kanye said, I apologize to anyone, you know, of people that just don't know who was, what was going on. Anybody that was confused. <laughs> He's not apologizing to those specific, those specific, you know, hijacks. He's saying anybody that took collateral damage. Same thing that Kyrie's kicking, man. Anybody that's taking collateral 
damage, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm sure some things were questionable, maybe even untrue. Some things may be. <laughs> like I said in the first, when you guys were asking me when I was sitting on the stage, I don't believe everything that everybody posts. It's a documentary. So, you know, anything that someone's referring to, that's like us dropping some drop or, you know, sharing a link. And someone says, yeah, but in that link, it also says, okay, uh, we don't believe everything that researcher is kicking. We don't believe everything, um, you know, that's being researched or the intention. We don't know the intention of this person or that person, this researcher or that researcher, you know. Every book in our drive library, we don't agree with everything that author's coming from. I mean, just look at the Horace, Bo <laughs> Horace, Horace Butler situation, man. You know, he was butthurt for a long time. I think we're good now, man. I think we're okay, man. But, you know, we have a different um, perspective, man. You know, uh, same thing with the Forbidden Histories of America. You know, that author has a different perspective. We don't agree with everything that's in that book. Uh, we don't agree with all the translations of the so-called Bible. We don't agree with all this New Testament situation. We don't agree with a lot of things. So to expect him to agree with everything in a three-and-a-half-hour documentary and try to hang and lynch this man force him to apologize try to break him in public break him down just because he don't say that I disagree with the complete video or link he's like look man I take I take responsibility for posting that some things that were questionable in there untrue you know what? If we watch that documentary, I'm going to pause it and say some things, too, that were untrue. You don't think they got it all the way right, do you? You think they had all the drop? That was in 2018. He said, I don't believe everything everybody posts. Back, back. That, they couldn't take that. I take responsibility wasn't enough for them. They want him to say, I'm sorry. I apologize. If they don't see I'm sorry, if they don't see I apologize, then the deal is off, right? All the deals are off, Kanye. All the deals are off, Kyrie. He says, I take responsibility. That's not enough. They want to hear, I'm sorry. I apologize, boss. I'm sorry. This is me for he apologized. This is him trying to, I guess, smooth things over. Look at this guy. You don't qualify to speak. On Kyrie, to Kyrie, on any frequency level of the bro, he wouldn't want to have a conversation with you. What 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 duck do you have in this race, man? What eagle are you soaring over here, man? <laughs> Look at this jabroni, how confused he is. He done read the wrong quote. Then he's gonna try to, you know, bounce back and slither back, man. man I'm just gonna get a little bit of this before I go crazy. I'm sorry, this is before he apologized. This is him trying to, I guess, smooth things over. So he continued, asked directly if he's had any anti-Semitic beliefs. Irving said, again, I'm going to repeat, I don't know how the label becomes justified. Because you guys ask me the same questions over and over and over again. But this is not going to turn into a spin around cycle. Questions upon questions. I told you. Y'all not going to keep disrespecting me. I'm not going to keep going around and around with you people. You just want to keep putting a label on me and it's not justified. You know why? Because I am Shem. I can't be anti-Shem. I can't be anti-black, right? Unless I'm anti-wicked. You know what I'm saying? He's speaking frequency talk. They want him to say, I'm sorry. I apologize. He said, you ain't going to disrespect me. Keep labeling me something that's not justified. I respect all walks of life. Why can't that be enough? I embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. Oh, no, you can't embrace all walks of life. You can't take responsibility, Kyrie. I need you to hear. I, we need you to say I'm sorry. I told you guys how I felt. I respect all walks of life and embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. That was the answer to the question. So, Kyrie, can you say that you're not anti-Semite? That would 
fuck everything you just said, Kyrie, about walks of life, respect, and responsibility. We get it. You take responsibility. So, are you an anti-Semite? He just said, stop labeling me something that's not qualified. Man, y'all trust these eyes, man. That was his answer. Now, this is his actual apology over on Instagram after he's been suspended. To all Jewish families and communities that are hurt and affected from my post, I am deeply sorry to have caused you pain, and I apologize. I initially reacted out of emotion to being unjustly labeled anti-Semitic instead of focusing on the healing process of my Jewish brothers and sisters <laughs> that were hurt from the hateful remarks made in the... My Jewish brothers and sisters. <laughs> Again, like Kanye, he's saying he is a Shemai. He is Judah. Hey, y'all want an apology? Y'all kicked the man off the team, dropped his endorsements. Hey, I guess you got him to say I'm sorry. I guess you got old Kyrie to say I apologize, huh? To all Jewish families <clears throat> and all Jewish communities. Is that, is that what y'all wanted? Now, if, if, if this is, you know, what you've been asking for, is that going to be enough? Can a man get, have his job back? Is he still suspended? I mean, this is tragic, man. It's tragic that Kyrie even got to, you know, and they're not going to take it from him. They're going to say, yeah, he, he just had his uh, publicist write it. <laughs> That's not going to be enough for him, you know. <laughs> and what's funny is that Kyrie's pretty deep. He, he, let's say he did have his publicist write it. You know, uh, to him, he's like, I, I'm not apologizing, but hey, you apologize. So the publicist says, all right, I am sorry. <laughs> it's coming from the publicist. It's not coming from Kyrie. Yeah, man, it's, it's all, it was all a game. I used to read Word of Magazine. Yeah, man, is this, is this what y'all, so you would think they would take that and, That'll be that, right? But they still got to keep that same demon time energy on our people. That's just waking up and investigating, man. Now they're labeled. So this label is going to stay with Kyrie forever now. Not any of his, you know, attributes and, you know, any of his amazing, you know what I'm saying, victories, man, and all the amazing things he's accomplished with his, with his family, with his career. In your eyes, in the eyes of Hijack City, he's an anti-Semite. He thinks he's the real us. They're so threatened. They're so fearful and confused. Let's keep going. In the documentary, and lastly here, Jake, I want to clarify any confusion on where I stand fighting against anti-Semitism by apologizing for posting the documentary without context and a factual explanation outlining the specific beliefs in the documentary I agreed with and disagreed with. I had no intentions to disrespect any Jewish cultural history regarding the Holocaust or perpetuate any hate. I'm a seeker of truth and knowledge, and I know who I am. Yeah, I, I don't believe him at all. Bang. That's not enough for these people. Look at these eyes. <laughs> That's not enough. Yeah, he just has some dummy dude. Fuck Kyrie, we hate Kyrie, and they just hate hateful tweet. Kyrie, remember these same people that said uh, Kanye, um, mental health, you know Kanye, uh, anti-Semite, this, you know all this stuff like that. So they just love putting these words together. Kyrie apologizes. They said Kanye apologizes for hate, hateful tweet. All he did was. Send a link, man. He just said I, I had no context. That means I have no context. If it was good or bad, y'all check this out is all he's saying. Not promoting. Oh, this is great. You have to see it. Raving reviews. No, he's saying, y'all check this out. You might get something out of this. He's not even saying that. He's just linking. He's just sending a link, man. And they call it a hateful tweet. And this jabroni doesn't buy it. He 
doesn't accept. Kanye, Kyrie don't care about you accepting this apology, man. You ain't built what Kyrie has built. You ain't built what Kanye has built. You a scoffer. You know, in the scriptures, you, you will be called the scoffers. <laughs> and this guy right here. Oh, yo, you want to talk Judas? Well, we could talk Judas. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I don't think he wrote that. I think his publicist wrote it. I don't think he believes a word of it. Uh, and was it because of the suspension? Of course! Oh, gosh. Who talks like this, man? Who, who uses sounds like that, man? Look at these eyes, man. Y'all trust these eyes, man? These are the people, you know, that are just lynching our nagas left and right. Oh, well, my platform, uh, uh, you know, I I got my, uh, you know, my first bosses were uh, Irish. He, has, he had this whole thing about working at whatever CNBC and that he had Irish bosses, not Jewish. So you take one Irish boss situation and compare it to how many other situations? That's like saying I got one black friend. See, we got black people in the neighborhood. We got black people in the neighborhood. I got one black friend. So you had an Irish boss. That means that it's not predominantly still run by the same people that Yeezy's talking about. And Kyrie is now having to apologize too. And now we got to hear this weird sound coming from you. What, what kind of sound is this? And was it because of the suspension? Of course! Oh, okay, God. so he's about to lose a ton of money, and it was an unpaid suspension. Yeah, that's the worst sound I ever heard, man. But that's not the main reason why he did it. The main reason why he did it is because people started asking Nike, hey, you're going to keep this guy as a, as one of your... Uh, keep this guy. Like, he's just the worst scumbag on earth. And they're going to start getting into some name calling, which, again, is letting me know all gloves are off, man. I can't respect these people for no jobs they hold or no media positions they have. Nah, man, they, they don't have no respect for us, man. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. Not even a little bit. As soon as they get an opportunity to shit on a nigga, they shit on a nigga, man. Put the kitties to bed. Let's go. Top athletes, you, you're going to pay millions of dollars? So, and remember, Adidas pulled the giant deal with Kanye West. Right. So when Kyrie all of a sudden realized... Yeah, he loves connecting the Kyrie-Kanye flow, right? These people hate to see these Nagas coming up. They hate to see independent day because they, they say, no, you independent people are dumbasses. I think he's actually going to call independent thinkers dumbasses. I mean, let, let's go, let's go. Realize, oh... Nobody might let me play basketball. I might not be able to make any more money. And they're going to pull my Nike deal. Well, okay, yeah, sure. Write up something that I don't mean at all and put it out in the press. No, ex apology not accepted. Now, I don't speak for Jews. Yeah, you just did. Apology not accepted. It wasn't for you. It's not for you to say apology not accepted. You're clearly speaking for them. You've been speaking for them the whole time. Then you're going to talk about you got a Muslim background but you ain't really Muslim now, but da 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 da. So you can't be in the Jewish pot because of your Muslim background. Stop it, man. You work <laughs> and you in cahoots with the same bullshit. I don't care what you claim, man. We we getting charged up around here. Man. Jews, I'm not even Jewish, okay. And so everybody can make their own decision uh, that they want, okay. But Kyrie Irving has a, has a very consistent pattern. It, they, they like to call it independent thinker, right? Uh -oh. So the, all the independent thinkers somehow, though, wind up in the same hateful ideology. They're so independent. All the independent thinkers wind up in the same hateful ideology. Did he just say that? But they're not going to cancel him. Because independent thinkers don't have, you know, some type of union or something. <laughs> we need an independent thinker union so we can cancel this uh, jabroni, man. <laughs> he just said all, not some, not sometimes, but all independent thinkers have the same or come up with the same hateful 
agenda. So we can't be that independent if we all end up with this anti-Semitic situation, right? He's putting Kanye with the Kyrie again. Every time y'all niggas think independently, you start uh, saying, um, who's imposter? Who's the one who's imposturing me? You know, who's acting like they're us? Because when I look at those frescoes in Russia, when I look at them Russian icons, when I look at those paintings, those 17th century, 16th century paintings in Russia, and they got Negro priests all over the place. And we connect the Rus with the kings and queens of Jerusalem. Right here in India Superior, the land of the Preston, called America today. With the lost lunas, decalogue, stones, and picto paleo, Hebrew, in New Mexico. The Ten Commandments in the rock. Pre hijack. They just found out about paleo Hebrew. This paleo Hebrew embedded in the rock that they date back to 700 or so AD. At the same time with the Kalalus and Sylvanus to Texas, Solomon the Builder, Sylvanus Bravo, the Ogam, Dawi. Yeah, I'm talking Hebrew history in America. They can't connect to this. No ish can't connect to this ish. You know what I'm saying? They ish can't connect to this ish. You know what I'm saying? So you don't accept the apology. Funny noise making man, huh? Independent thinkers somehow, though, wind up in the same hateful ideology. Independent thinker, right? So that all the independent thinkers somehow, though, wind up in the same hateful ideology. They're so independent. And they all wind up following some rando on Facebook, right? They're like, I don't believe 99% of the world's scientists. I believe Bob on Facebook. Yeah, now he's talking about flat earth, right? So Kyrie's connection with the flat earth. Right. So you just took something off of Facebook and now you believe that and you don't you don't believe no scientists, you don't believe no NASA's, you're independent thinkers, right? He's talking to Drop Nation, he's talking to anybody asking questions about um these rocket launches. You know, Apollos and all these uh pictures of Earth, you know? About gravity and how it's still a theory, not a law. Yeah. About the uh, Van Allen belt, the radiation that they're still trying to figure out how to get through. More worlds beyond a pole. I guess we would just be the people on Facebook that they're listening to. So he's saying, don't listen to those crazy people on Facebook. YouTube and Facebook and IG, <laughs> Twitter, whatever. Don't 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 listen to these crazy people on TikTok. <laughs> I know we got noggins popping off on TikTok. I see y'all. Hey, hop to my TikTok noggins. <laughs> yeah, you independent thinkers are what? I'm not taking vaccines. Bob told me I'm an independent thinker. So everything he's mocking with this stupid ass face, they always got to make the dumb ass faces. I mean, if you notice, they make the most dumb ass faces to try to lure you in <laughs> to the confused, you know, uh, serpent energy. You know what I'm saying? Snake tongue energy, hateful energy, hating on someone who doesn't even care about you. They don't even care about you. You're talking about, I don't accept your apology. As if you're important enough to be even considered by Kyrie. You sit here reporting on important people. <laughs> you built a trash talking media company just to shit on important people. And you make your alliances <laughs> and you know you better make your alliances. So independent thinkers are now under attack, my noggin. And these used to be the networks that seem independent. But independent thinkers are now under attack. We're now part of the same hateful ideologies. For wanting to know beyond what their scientists and their public schools 
and their mainstream is telling us and more information than they can ever connect for us. And we find out there's a bunch of imposters running around, a bunch of hijacks making confederacies and making treaties, and even our own people that look just like us have been confederate against us. Thinker, okay? And, you know, uh, new Jews are on the media. That's a preposterous thing to say, okay? Look, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, he's like, but, I, you know, most people say, and the facts say and the, that they don't, but... Uh, but Bob on Facebook here has a documentary, and and I'm throwing Facebook under the bus here, but in this case, it's Amazon, okay? And so I, as an independent thinker, came to the same conclusion. Anti-vax, anti-Semite, anti-anything, okay? No, you're not an independent thinker. I have a much simpler explanation. You're a dumbass. Preposterous thing to say, okay? Look, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, he's like, but... Uh, as a very consistent pattern, it, they, they like to call it independent thinker, right? So that all the independent thinkers somehow, though, wind up with the same hateful ideology. They're so independent. And they all wind up following some rando on Facebook, right? They're like, I don't believe 99% of the world's scientists. I believe Bob on Facebook. I'm not taking vaccines. Bob told me. I'm an independent thinker, okay? And, you know, uh, new Jews run the media. It's a preposterous thing to say, okay? Look, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, he's like, but I, you know, most people say, and the facts say, and the, that they don't. But uh, but Bob on Facebook here has a documentary, and, and I'm throwing Facebook under the bus here, but in this case, it's Amazon, okay? And so I, as an independent thinker, came to the same conclusion. Anti-vax, anti-Semite, anti-anything, okay? No, you're not an independent. They threw anti-vax with anti-Semite. Because they realize these Hebrews that are waking up don't want their poison inside them. You know? At least we want to know what it is, you know? And we don't want to be um, called these labels. Instead of calling us Hebrew, you call us black, you call us anti-Semite. What else are you going to call us? Anti-Christ? I guess we are anti-Christ, because Christ means anointed in Greek. And who's the Greek anointed? Right. We're definitely anti that. We definitely hate that stuff. Because there's no power before our power. So we're anti you. Yeah, man, we're anti you. <laughs> I get it. If I can only drop this video on Ether Pack 3, I get it. <laughs> uh, you know, this is what happens when you are, um, you know, playing hardball on their baseball field, man, you know. They want you to play softball. <laughs> we got our own stadium, Managa, 432thedrop.com. Look out for us and help us keep building and let's help each other because we can't depend. We can't survive waiting on no truth. All these people do is make you hate yourself. They turn our people on each other. Make us hate ourselves. Make the dragon devour its own tail. And then he calls us a what? I don't think her. I have a much simpler explanation. You're a dumbass. It's about to be some furniture moving. It's about to be some furniture. It's about to be some furniture moving around here, man. For the independent thinkers association i have now started the independent thinkers association of the amaru Khan. and i'm gonna have to uh write you up man we we, we gonna have to write you up man <laughs> you just call independent just think about the atrocity <laughs> of calling someone who thinks independently dumbasses oh I wasn't calling all independent thinkers dumbasses, just those that disagree with science. That means they're independent from the mainstream. And yes, they can rock with each other. They're still independent from you just because someone rocks with someone else who has the water doesn't mean they're not independent. They 
had to be independent to separate from Hijack City and find some water. And Hawa always got the cons, you know what I'm saying, to pour that water, to 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 deliver that water, to deliver a naga out of Hijack City, man. You know what I'm saying? We always got help. We always got our nagas on the front lines, man. A hop to my nagas on the front lines, man. Delivering the truth. Whatever platform you dropping on. So we always got nagas in, in position, man. That'll make you dependent. That makes you independent because you had to get here. You had to tune in. You could be anywhere in the world right now, but you over here listening. You over here charging up with these cons. That's independence. You could be dependent, <laughs> but you chose an independent route and you found more independent free thinkers that are able to empty their cup, ask questions and investigate. You found people to investigate with. Y'all can be independent from Hijack City together and investigate your independent thoughts, your independent research. That's what Drop Nation is. Because all that drop leads to a wave, my nigga. You're not supposed to say I'm, I'm, I'm out of here, man. So this is how they feel, man. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a Russian general, man. Rush, I told y'all, man. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of Nagas, man. All throughout the world. Russia. All the Asiatics, ain't Russia still Asia? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a young soldier. A young soldier of the Holy Roman Empire. Right. So if the black is the European and the black is the American, you see it's a family war. It's a family more and more. Those that are calling themselves these, these titles today don't really got nothing to do with no true story of the past. They have infiltrated. They are hiding under our tents, using our titles. They say, we're the Andrews family. I said, Naga, we the Andrusians. We the land of Rus. The popes were Nagas. <laughs> Nagaville. Nagaville. Yeah, man, Nagaville. We're talking England. We're talking the Holy Roman Emperor. So what do you mean we're anti-Semitic, man? <laughs> All of these bloodlines were Naga-Semitic bloodlines, unless we were at war against other bloodlines. That were also melanated, whether we're talking ham or JP. <sighs> yeah, man. Byzantine Emperor Manuel. And I think this is the one that received the Preston letter. Because it said he wrote to either his cousin or, you know, Preston wrote a letter to Manuel. I think he has something to do with Pastor John. Con, con. This is his second wife, Maria of Antioch. All right, so, you know, it's a lot happening there. Yeah, man, I'm just, hey, shout out to Real History WW, man. Sometimes it's good, you know, because a picture, a picture's worth a thousand words, they say. Oh, Charlesy boy. <laughs> oh, Charles Kento. Invading you. The Inca. King Charles V. The first European emperor of the In Inca. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. So, yeah. We were invaded by our own people. We're not over here 
making a Jewish uh, hate party. No, we are seeing clearly. But we see that Israel was against all hijacks, whether they look like this or that. That all hijacks were against Israel, so-called Israel. You know, we looked into the wars with Moab, the wars with Esau, the wars, you know, with the Confederacy, the Ammonites, all these things. Joshua mowing them down, the Canaanites, and all of them were looking the same damn near. It's melanated people. To any people, whether they call themselves ish this, whether they call themselves white, which is a status <laughs> given to them to come here. Who were given the status of white? I don't know. Oh, Charles, <laughs> it's a more and more war. We've been invaded by a confederacy of our own brothers and our own sisters. By the time you guys come into play, it's very recent, which is why when we go looking around, snooping around in the 1828 dictionary, there's no such thing as a Semite. And Jew is just Judah. Ah, oh, man. There's a Samaritan. You know, there's a good Samaritan. <laughs> but that got nothing to do with the Judah. It's only a Shemite or a Shemitic Naga. And we say Shemitic Naga because a Negus is a Shemite. Ethiopian Negus King Naga. Afro-Asiatic in Ethiopia just means burnt, burn face, burnt face, or fiery looking. So Ethiop is a Greek word meaning fiery looking. That's not even burnt. That's a fiery dragon, my Naga. Back to Naga, Sha. <laughs> Negus connects to that fiery so a Shemite is fiery, man. Back on your Elijah flow. Yeah, man. They're hiding in our tents, and it's so easy for them to hide in our tents, man. I mean, this is actually pretty scary. How easy it for it. Shout out to uh the bro. It's it's day. I think it's day. I think that's how you say it. Shout out to the bro. Let's go. So this uh, so-called Asian lady transforms herself into Kobe being Brian. Man. <laughs> Shout out to the bro. We got to rub our beards on that one. One more time, man. This is what she starts. This is how she looks. And this is what comes out of it, man. This is her. So how much of them walking around today or on the news and these news anchors, how much of them are really us? And on a side note, we see really where they get their features from. We're talking Afro-Asiatic, right? right. We're talking Afro-Asiatic family, right? Yeah, we see where they're getting their features from, man. Very scary, right? Very weird. We're just talking about some job. Hey, shout out to bro, Scrappy, man. He's, you know, he's standing 10 toes with Yeezy, man. Let, let, let's see what Scrappy got to say, man. I, I really, I, like I was telling my people, I feel like black people is the worst when it comes to criticism. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because 
they will see all the other races jump on this one black person and then they gonna go jump on them too, knowing that these people been killing us and toward, they've been doing everything and then these people say, oh, look what he's doing to the Jews. And Cuz said, well, black people were the first Jews. We can go in, the, yeah, we can, let's go back. Like, and, but, but when he said that, because nobody, none of the Jews never want to say, let's talk about the shit. Let's not even be like, no, 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 because we don't even know about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know about this, but it's 12 tribes. My it's 12 tribes that was, and when you say 12 tribes, those are the 12 tribes that still going on to this day. You know what I'm saying? Same tribe. This day, black, white, got a whole bunch of my, you know what I'm saying? So it like, when he when he went on that that rant, he was trying to say something, but he just didn't know how to say it the right way. I feel him. Wow, that bro broke it down real smooth, like man. I appreciate you know, little scrappy man, big scrappy man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he said some real clear facts right here. One more time, man. I feel what he's saying. I feel it. I I, I really I like, I was telling my people. I feel like. Black people is the worst when it comes to criticism. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying because they will see all the other races jump on this one black person and then they gonna go jump on them too, knowing that these people been killing us and toward, they've been doing everything and then these people say, "Oh, look what he's doing to the Jews." And Cuz said, "Well, black people were the first Jews. We can go in. The, yeah, we can. Let's go back. Like, and but but when he said that." Because nobody, none of the Jews never want to say, let's talk about the Let's talk about the original. You can't talk about the original without talking about the creator. Because even when you're talking about uh, the American, they say the American is the Aboriginal or the copper color race is found here, not brought here on slave ships, but found here because these are the Hebrews. But they were also involved in a more and more war with other tribes. Then they got Aboriginals, right? And we said, Who's the Aboriginals? Oh, you mean, uh, yeah, Aboriginal first or original. So why not just call it first people? Or original. What's original? Who's original? <laughs> so, you know, the original people are so-called aboriginal. This is all going back to the people of Hawaii, the primitive inhabitant, right? <laughs> this is who Hawaii gave the land to. And it just so happens to be uh, copper color races that were found here. By the Europeans? <laughs> Who's the Europeans? Oh, this painting in the Larco Museum says that the first European emperor is old Charles. He's a European. Story getting clear. See, it's not about Jewish people. It's about our own people in our <laughs> And our indigenous lands and our indigenous tents hijacking our indigenous people. Starting with Big Mama and Big Papa up here. We're saying about you, you're just a part of the unraveling of the story, and you're a big part, you know, of the snares and the traps when it comes to the entertainment business, when it comes to a lot of these industries. How'd you get so much drop? So much power. Who gave it to you? If this is the Roman Empire, Emperor Charles V in 1500, 1558, and Columbus discovered America in 1492, <laughs> that means there was a black ass King Charles behind it. So what was Columbus, man? St. Christopher, man. I mean, these are just things that make you go, hum, hum, <laughs> cool. 
These are things that make you go cool. Wow, man. Shout out to Scrappy, man. Um, yeah, man, you know. Surf the wave on IG. There's always something dope happening. Shout out to Growing Up Italian. Shout out to I- Tone Ivy. Come. So there's a hidden painting in Napoli. How do you pronounce it? Chiesi de San Giorgio. St. George, huh? So St. George is who slayed the dragon, and it's a hidden painting. The first painting, I'm going to get it back, was an angel's. It was an angel war happening. It's destruction on the ground, and it's some angels in the sky popping off. And then he's going to remove and get to the real spill, and you're going to see dragons. So they went from angels to dragons, and all we said is angels in scripture are dragons. Fallen angels, fallen dragons. Rising angels, rising dragons. <laughs> Good dragons, bad dragons. Awa Seraphim means, you know, the burning ones, Seraph, are the highest orders of the dragons. Seraph, six wings. Isaiah 6, singing holy, holy to Hawa. Singing to the creator. Six winged dragons. Seraph, burning ones. Just like Ethiop, Ethiop, fiery, burning ones. Negus, Naga, burning ones. Nigga, burning ones. <laughs> it seems that we're related to these burning ones. America, Amaru, you're talking dragon talk. Let's go, free Phineas. you about to see the green dragon. The painting behind the painting. Oh. Wow, now you got the dragon getting slain. Look at this, man. Now you got the dragon getting slain. They went from angels to dragons right in front of your face, bro, man. It's all happening, man. <laughs> Drop is popping off, man. It's a closer picture of the Charles, you know, uh, hijacking the ink of flow. Tupac attacking them, man. Rest in power, Pac. Yeah, man. Look at it, man. Your own brothers, man. Hijacking the knock. Now, he's the first European emperor. And we were found here by the Europeans. <laughs> Put it together. 1492, Columbus sells the ocean blue. Oh, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, 1500s to 1558, found here by the Europeans. Man. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. The Inca emperors are being hijacked by the European emperors. Charles Quinto, House of Bourbon, resigned as King of Spain. So you being ain't, ain't Columbus from Seville, Spain? Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Charles Quinto, as the 15th Inca Emperor. Oh, Charles, oh, Charles, with your red stockings on. And your duck boots popping off. Hijacking the ink, huh? Hijacking the car. Charles Kento, 15th Inca Emperor. Remember, we were hijacked in America by our own Nagas. This ain't about no Jewish. <laughs> it's about Judah being hijacked by the other Confederate tribes. Shout out Dizzle Fetty, JL, J Law, what it do? Shout out to Ty Bazan, shout out to Moon Boy. Go get the drop, Ty Battle dropping in the drop, drop chat, chat to chat, chat. And yeah, man, what y'all think this is, man? Huh?
They said it's a petrified opal tree in Arizona. But I see a bunch of them, man. Looks like a bunch of them. Is this, uh, you know, could this be related to an ancient organism? I'm just going to leave it right there, man. Shout out to Mud Fossil, man. <laughs> Popping off, man. We MHOE, man. Ma keeps coming with the looks, man. Look out for us, man. Most high over everything. Shout out to Young Mac, man. Baby Mac popping off. It's my baby dragon, man. Don't mind Mac, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you understand that none of you will put it that way? Do you guys understand the consequences of what you've just done? No, no. You, you guys. I mean, what's the difference between that and this? What's the difference, man? Some people left a comment. Ain't this blackface too? Why do they always want to be us? You don't see us doing this, man. Unless it's a comedy skit like uh, white girls or something, man. <laughs> ah, man, let's go. So you got to drop a... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Net to spend Kyrie Irving indefinitely after anti-Semitic movie pop. There's no such thing as anti-Semitic because Semitic ain't even in a dictionary. And they don't want to talk shim talk. That's why they always put a swerve in. <clears throat> so, you see what it is? You know, I'm just bringing up the links, you know. So, you know, this is happening. Failure to disavow anti-Semitism. So he could say I take responsibility, but he's not hes not uh, preaching against anti-Semitism because he doesn't agree with the label and any question. You can't even question the word. That's a made-up word. You can't even question the made-up word without being punished, man. Lynched. Publicly lynched. You can't say I am judah to these people they ignore that and say but you're hurting so many people and you can't say but my people are hurting that's the point i'm reacting to trauma we can't react to trauma without them bringing up their own and that was Kyrie's job to tell you everything about the documentary he just can't leave the link so that you can have your own independent thought oh because Independent thinkers are dumbasses, ain't that right? 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 Entry, and, and I'm throwing Facebook under the bus here, but in this case, it's Amazon, okay? <laughs> and so I, as an independent thinker, came to the same conclusion. Anti-vax, anti-Semite, anti-anything, okay? No, you're not an independent thinker. I have a much simpler explanation. You're a dumbass. And you're not supposed to say that. <gasps> Yeah, you just uh, shot yourself with an arrow, man. Yeah. All he did was leave a link. Lock it. He left a link to Hebrews the Negro. It's an old documentary. Not too old. A few years ago. Ben hit the scene. Nagas done did drops on it. Nothing new to us. He's sharing it with his Hebrew Negro people. He just leaves a link. That's it. He only leaves a link by now. And they want him to say exactly what they disagree, what he disagrees with, or why he doesn't agree, or why he agrees. He, he's entitled to freedom of speech, man. He's just leaving a link so you can have your own thought process. But I get it. Independent thinkers are dumbasses. Now we see what y'all think about us. So you're going to tell your children not to think independently? Because it might lead to being anti your program? Anti your agenda, anti your your uh, brainwash, programming. 
Let's go. Yeah, man. So, you know, just looking at that documentary, you can't, you can't get it on Disney, Netflix. Uh, Well, they, I guess they, oh, you can't stream it on Prime, but they said you can buy it on Prime or rent it on Prime. So, you know, it's like 11 bucks to rent. My, <laughs> I don't know if my rental time is up yet, but I'm going to try to get a piece of it before we get out of here. See what all the fuss is about, you know, fair use. You know, we're just doing some criticism, some comments, and some research. So the only place you could find it was on Jeff Bezos' Amazon, right? Kyrie's like, I'm li- I'm linking it to Bezos' platform. So he can he can have a platform. Imagine if Kyrie had Kyrie.com and he was the only place that was showing the documentary. They would try to take down Kyrie.com, right? But Jeff Bezos, <laughs> Amazon Prime, they can have the documentary and don't get no slander. No one takes down Amazon. But Kyrie can't leave a link to Amazon. This is hypocritic hypocrisy. (laughs) Absolute hogwash malarkey. Hatred at at the highest level. Ignorance at the highest level. He can't leave a link to Amazon. But you can play it on Amazon. We got it queued up right now. We on Amazon.com. I'm belly flopping right now in this thing. You know, it's a three-hour joint. I can't show all of it, man. But, you know, I'm a belly flop. You know, like I said, this video <laughs> might only be available. On if you're watching this video and you got to this point or, you know, you you got to the end, you get to the end, hey, a lot of what? I mean, that that means we got a couple friends, man. <laughs> oh, I got my YouTube homies, man. I, I do got some YouTube homies behind the scenes looking out for us, man. I do got some YouTube partners that keep the most high over everything, man. So shout out to my YouTube knocker behind the scenes. Halal Hawa, you know, if we're able to watch this, you know, <laughs> in to- totality together right here on this platform, man, because. We going we gonna surf the way. Let's go. So Kyrie just leave a link, man. That's it. They want him to apologize for this link. Could only watch it on Amazon. <laughs> Let's see some more clips, man. See what they got. See what they talking about, man. You know, I, I want to know who's talking about stuff. Oh man, I know what they talking about. They talking about that bush. <laughs> yeah, that's a, we talking about that too. Let's go. All right, they asking, they asking Re. All right, they're gonna ask Re a couple things. Let's see what Re got to say. In a joint statement pledging to each donate five hundred thousand dollars to anti hate causes. Kyrie Irving speaking moments ago. Here it is, new on Sports Center. With a week of hindsight, are you sorry for the hurt that your post caused people? I take my responsibility for posting that. Some things that were questionable in there, untrue. Like I said, in the first time you guys asked me when I was sitting on that stage, I don't believe everything that everybody posts. It's a documentary. So, I take my responsibility. It seems like Adam Silver wanted to hear the word I apologize, or in your mind, you said I didn't mean to cause any harm. Were you apologizing? Or were you not apologizing? I didn't mean to cause any harm. I'm not the one that made the documentary. What, what are the specific things in the documentary that don't believe true? I think uh, some of the criticism of the Jewish faith in the community, for sure. Some points made in there that were uh, unfortunate. Kyrie, are you surprised that you did hurt people? Uh, Surprised that I did hurt people? Are you surprised that the action and some of the things that you did hurt people? Yeah, I, I think I can ask a better question. It's just, where were you when I was uh, a kid? Uh-oh. Turn it out. That uh, 300 million of my ancestors. 
are buried in America. Uh oh, you turning up? Where were you guys asking those same questions when I was a kid dealing with learning about the traumatic events of my familial history and what I'm proud to come from and why I'm proud to stand here and why when I repeat myself that I'm not going to stand down, it has nothing to do with dismissing any other race or group of people. I'm just I'm proud of my heritage and what we've been through. And uh, So we can't build and be proud of ourselves without offending nobody. That looks like we got no wiggle room, my noggies. It must be time to choose up. It must be time to try up. Let's go. It must be time to rise up. The fact that this is pinned me against the Jewish community. And uh, I'm here answering questions of whether or not I'm sorry or not on something I didn't create. And it was something I shared. And I'm telling everybody I'm taking responsibility. Then that's where I sit. So... You know, these same questions that you guys ask, me dealing with it as being a melanated, pigmented person all around the world and dealing with racial biases against my skin color, demeaning me because of my religious beliefs. And I'm still sitting in the seat standing. So uh, I take my full responsibility. Again, I'll repeat it, posting something on my Instagram or Twitter that may have had some unfortunate falsehoods in it. But I also am a human being that's 30 years old and I've been growing up in a country that's told me that I wasn't worth anything and I came from a slave class. And I come from a people that are meant to be treated the way we get treated every day. They want to act like we home-born slaves is all they say. These people act like we meant to be treated this way. We can't ask questions and we can't react to our trauma without offending nobody. At least we ain't just popping off violently. We just reading books and watching documentaries. And you're firing people, disenfranchising our people. Managa, we got no other way to go but to team up and connect like the cons do in that frequency of 432. Okay. So I'm not here to compare anyone's atrocities or tragic events that their families have dealt with generations of time i'm just here to continue to expose things that our world continues to put in darkness i'm a light i'm a beacon of light let's go that's what i'm here to do go, you guys Kyrie. ask me questions about basketball i give you my expert opinion you guys ask me about other things i give you my opinion and it's met with whatever you believe the perception or the deception is you guys investigate my life every day and you justify it by serving your own purpose, which I honor. I would like the same respect in return, figuring out just like anyone else. So please keep that same energy when we're talking about anti other things. <laughs> because go. just because I post a document doesn't mean I'm anti Semitic and doesn't mean that I'm automatically standing with everyone that is believing in that. So, Yeezy said it. Is Kyrie crazy too? Is he, man? I love how he just broke that down so beautifully. One more time. Here to compare anyone's atrocities or tragic events that their families have dealt with generations of time. I'm just here to continue to expose things that our world continues to put in darkness. I'm a light. I'm a beacon of light. That's what I'm here to do. You guys ask me questions about basketball. I give you my expert opinion. You guys ask me about other things. I give you my opinion, and it's met with whatever you believe the perception or the deception is. You guys investigate my life every day, and you justify it by serving your own purpose, which I honor. I would like the same respect in return, figuring out just like anyone else. So please keep that same energy when we're talking about anti-other things, because just because I post a document doesn't mean I'm anti-Semitic. And doesn't mean that I'm automatically standing with everyone that is believing in that. So it's unfortunate timing that we're in, but I'm glad that I could stand on the truth because I'm not afraid of these mics, these cameras. I used to be looking everyone in the eye and telling them the truth. But I'm proud of who I am. Let's go. Any label that you put on me, I'm able to dismiss because I study. I know the Oxford Dictionary. You look it up, right? Whoa. It's one of the biggest mistakes I had in being a kid was not knowing European or Western language. So I started looking it up and understanding the definitions and why they say 
If you want to trick a black person, put it in a book. <laughs> Kyrie popping up. By serving your own purpose, which I honor. I would like the same respect in return. Figuring out just like anyone else. So please keep that same energy when we're talking about anti-other things. Because just because I post a document doesn't mean I'm anti-Semitic. And doesn't mean that I'm automatically standing with everyone that is believing in that. So it's unfortunate timing that we're in, but I'm glad that I could stand on the truth. Because I'm not afraid of these mics, these cameras. I used to be looking everyone in the eye and telling them the truth. And I'm proud of who I am. Any label that you put on me, I'm able to dismiss because I study. I know the Oxford Dictionary, you look it up, right? Just one of the biggest mistakes I had in being a kid was not knowing European or Western language. So I started looking it up and understanding the definitions and why they said. Now we're in at 1828, Noah Webster Dictionary and finding out there is no semantic. So we can only talk Shem. And Kyrie is dropping a documentary about Shem, whether they like it or not. He didn't create it. He was had interest peaked in it, whether that was for this or that. He dropped a link to it in case anybody else had any interest in this particular topic, whether they agree or disagree, not to propaganda, not to promote, just because the interest was already put out there. It's already a documentary. It's already on Amazon Prime. It costs $50 to buy it. They don't want you buying it. They'd rather you use that to buy the next, you know what I'm saying, boxing match, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> they'd rather you use that to, you know, buy your uh, McDonald's, man, your your Popeye's chicken, man. Nah. Kyrie wanted you to invest in you. He found something that he was able to take as a jewel and he saw, hey, this could be an opportunity. I mean, do we do we really need to explain why we drop links, man? Is that what is this what it's coming to? Freedom of speech out? No, no. Now we gotta justify why we're dropping links. I'm getting my videos taken down because of links. Not links that I made. Oh, this link might have some spam, so your whole video gotta go. That video's not connected to that link. The link is just in the description, but the description might lead somebody to spam, you know, so you're responsible for any spam and any link you drop. I'm not the Internet police. I can't tell who's spamming any links. Kyrie is not the documentary police. He can't give you uh, full satisfaction of your emotions when you watch documentaries, man. You want to argue with it. That's the point of a documentary is to put the information out to have a healthy debate. We don't even get to the debate process. You just take it and try to assassinate the man's character and the man's career. And not just that, but the message itself. Kyrie popping off, man. They say, if you want to trick a black person, put it in a book. I was wondering my whole life why they said that. Now I'm 30 years old and I know reading is a superpower. This helps me understand where I'm going and where I come from. It's like a tree with roots. Kyrie, the, the documentary listed among falsehoods, it said the Holocaust didn't happen. Do you Again, believe the Holocaust those falsehoods happened? are unfortunate. And it's not that I don't believe in the Holocaust. I never said that. I never, ever have said it. It's not come out of my mouth. I never tweeted it. I never liked anything like it. So... The Holocaust in itself is an event. We've been, we been convicted for social media, man. Kanye is being convicted for social media going into an uh, awareness, uh, a defense alert, a DEFCON 3, a readiness. He's telling, yo, y'all better get ready. He's now having to defend and say, I'm not anti-Semitic. Now we're forced to describe this made-up word. He just said, I know the definitions. Man, that means something to a, a large group of people that suffered something that could have been avoided. No one said we had to practice racism. No one said we had to treat each other like garbage. No one said that 
I had to stand here today and understand that many people that come from generations 60 years ago, 40 years ago, enslaved some of my ancestors still spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, and it's still going on. Let's you go. guys are asking me respectfully to speak on something that was a documentary that I had nothing to do with. I didn't make it. So just please keep that same energy when you guys are addressing me. Kyrie, for the record, do you have any anti-Semitic beliefs? <laughs> Again, I'm going to repeat. These people crazy. Man. I don't know how the label becomes justified because you guys ask me the same questions over and over again. But this is not going to turn into a spin around cycle, questions upon questions. About the same thing. He just said he respects everybody from the very top. And after he says, I respect everybody's all walk of life, very clearly he says that. And this dumbass still want to say, do you hate Jews? <laughs> but do you have any anti-Semitic thoughts, Kyrie? Do you? Do you hate him sometimes, Kyrie? I told you guys how I felt. I respect all walks of life and embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. I think what people want to hear, though, is just a yes or no on that question. Yes or no. I, I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. That's the best damn answer you can give you to a made-up word. Am I anti-Semitic? Do you, do you have any anti-Semitic thoughts, Kyrie? But people just want to hear yes or no. Yes, you do. Or no, you don't. He says, bitch, I can't be anti-me. I can't have no anti-Semitic thoughts if I know who I am. Life and embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. I think what people want to hear, though, is just a yes or no on that question. Yes or no. I, I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. Bang. I was informed that they wanted to have a meeting and we handled it. Kyrie Irving, moments ago. Uh, yeah. So, no matter what he say, they still want to take away. They still want to make an exam. Still want to lynch a man. This is lynching Naga season. Happening right in our face bones. Right in real time. Yeah, man. These jabronis with their microphones. Spewing off their questions. Spewing off their hate. Hey, man. The homie uh, Kwame tapping in. Cause this, go this all goes back to Kwame. <laughs> the go along, get along gang. Hey, uh. You know, you might be tapping with the homie Kwame. Shout out to Kwame. We appreciate it. You letting us use your content to uh, get some education. Let's go. I got to disrespect them because I secretly want to be one. Uh, I just know that once you're making a certain type of money, when you take the money, they take your tongue. Uh. They take your likeness. Uh and I've been warning of this, or I've been speaking about this for a year and a half, but everybody wants to call a bus crazy. You're crazy. Well, guy. still think I'm crazy. <laughs> Boy, look at here. Now, here it is. Kyrie Irving uh, is being silent. She's being suspended. He's being forced to apologize for <sighs> reposting something that's already on an Amazon site. I think Amazon is owned by what Jeff Bezos. I think Jeff Bezos is a Jewish man. I think allegedly, I think I snap. If the thing that Kyrie Irving reposted, by the way, not originally originated, he didn't create it. If the thing that Kyrie Irving posted is so bad, why won't Jeff Bezos take it off of Amazon? If he's the owner, I don't know. If he's the owner, why won't whoever the owner of Amazon, why aren't they made to apologize and take it down? Whoever the authored the book, why isn't he made to, you know, apologize? I, I don't understand. And I'm just asking. I just want to ask this question. I don't want to be canceled. I just want to know. I just want to know some answers. 
because this ain't making sense. The only thing that seemed to make sense to me is the fact that Kyrie Irving is a is a hell of a basketball player who has a large platform and who when you have a large platform and you're definitely if you're black and you're male you got to watch out with what you say how many times does one have to explain what it is that they meant what it is that they were saying how like the explanation was perfect okay he looked up his alleged name and his roots and then that's what it traced back to he posted it he didn't have any intent to hurt anybody none of that he even said it took responsibility for posting it but would not take responsibility for anything that was hurtful because he didn't say it so why I must without the the without the other place taking it down. If it's that bad, make everybody take that shit down. Make Amazon take it down. Take that shit down. We got picks, boy. We got picks. Mm mm mm. What a year. <laughs> what a two. What two, damn, dude. <laughs> man, what a year, right? <laughs> I mean, what's what's next, man? We we losing Nagas this way. They trying to cancel Nagas that way. Shout out to the homie Quan, man, man. The go along, get along game is active. I had this link up because initially, you know, even though I had rented it on uh, Amazon, it wasn't playing and it looked like they took it down. So uh, that's just you know, this is just a backup. Shout out to El Musa Media 1080, just in case y'all really need it on the slender. Uh, shout out to El Musa Media 1080. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so, all right, man. Um, it's a lot going on. We're going to get into it. You know, I'm going to belly flop. Fair use in your caboose bone, man. You know what I'm saying? And. I mean, these, you know, then I'm going to get into some of these jabronis like, who's this over here, man? I got I got some jabroni conversation coming in hot, man. I'm just going to get them loaded up, dodge all hijacks at all costs. That's what she's telling She's like, man, these hijacks is crazy. He's like, yeah, they're getting crazier and crazy. Yeah, okay. Shout out to Hip Hop News Uncensored. You know, he actually does a really good flow on this, man. And, you know, maybe I'll just get a couple thoughts from the bro, man. Nike just did the unthinkable. All right, man. Let me get it from here, man. Precedented event that went down just a few moments ago with Kyrie Irving. Now, this right here, you're not going to believe. No, Nike has suspended its relationships with Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving in the wake of the controversy surrounding his social media post about a book and a movie containing so-called anti-Semitic ideas. Now, the company announced Friday just a few minutes ago that Nike will, will not launch Kyrie's new Kyrie 8. Now, Nike goes on to say, at Nike, we believe that there's no place for hate speech and we condemn any form of anti-Semitism, right? We are deeply sad and disappointed by the situation and its impact on everyone now. Kyrie was suspended by the Nets Thursday night for at least five games without pay after failing to formally apologize for his post that he actually shared. For failing to clarify whether he held anti-Semitic beliefs, I think that they asked him in a press conference and he really didn't answer it. Like they wanted him to now. Kyrie did apologize on an Instagram post um, Thursday writing to all the Jewish families and communities that are hurt and affected from my post. I'm deeply sorry to have caused you pain, and I apologize. Now, Kyrie is 30 years old. He has a lucrative series. You know what I mean? He's been with Nike since 2014. And if you are at the young youth kids basketball game, if you're in the schools, everybody's wearing Kyrie's. It shocked me to like to go to like AAU games and see everybody wearing Kyrie's, a different color. Kyrie's this and that. They wear that and the Lamelo balls, at least in this area, right? And not a lot of Jordans. So, 
what do I think about this? First and foremost, let, let us deal with this for a minute, right? Because the end of the day, I don't think, this is my opinion, that he was meaning to be, quote unquote, so-called anti-Semitic. And when I see him apologize, I believe that he is truly deeply sorry. But in my opinion, there needs to be a serious conversation between the two sides. Because I'm hearing a lot of different information when it comes to who the Semites are. I just am. Uh. Right? And it seems like to me that the word anti-Semitic has become like a catchphrase for anyone who, who doesn't agree with the Jewish people or anyone. Who and that's what is being exposed. It's like, all right, we've been playing your game with these new words you're making up. But now it just seems like anybody that don't agree with your agenda is going to be labeled and not just labeled, but destroyed by you. Right. This is worse than the whole LG you know, TZX, you know, situation of, oh, okay, you say anything about these people, we're going to cancel this. That, that's why we build our own community. You feel me? <laughs> so our community is holding us up. So we ain't worried about these jabronis and hijacks, you know, with their cancel culture. We never heard about no cancel culture into social media, man. This is all new, new. They want us to go into the another matrix. VR, virtual reality, metaverses. You see it coming. You see the brainwash, the hive mentality. We like you. We all don't like you. You don't like who we like? Shame on you. You like who we don't like? You're canceled. <laughs> you see it happening. Social media is training robots, man. On who may even... You know, and it, yeah, I don't agree with any, anybody who may, and listen to what I'm about to say, because this is going to be deep. Anyone who may post something that may be that in a slight way is degrading, anything like that. But on the contrary, on the contrary, right? Look at all the stuff that's allowed to go on in hip hop. Look at all the promotion that goes on in hip hop. Do you ever hear Nike saying anything to all the uh, uh, rappers that are wearing their stuff, calling people the N-word? Do you ever hear Nike say anything to all the rappers that's in the videos wearing Nike that's degrading women, talking about shooting and killing black people? Do you ever see that? Do we really got to start going through videos and start, you know, looking at who wearing Nike? I wear man Nike. I probably spent a grip at Nike last year. Hey, shout out, man, my jigger, man. We had a... Great conversation about this, man. Shout out to Ox Zion Train, man. We, Zion Marley, man. We had a great uh, conversation. Shout out to Zion Train, man. I mean, MHOE, you know what I'm saying? We don't need to rock these goddesses and, and their powers and Balenciagas, you know what I mean? MHOE, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is why we got to do us. Shout out to all my knocks doing us, you know what I'm saying, in real time. Because we are becoming aware of what we're wearing, who we are promoting, you did. In fact, Nike's like our favorite brand. Mm. So this is where, again, let's just say for an example, if Kyrie Irving was a Jewish person and someone else did this to Kyrie, another group of people, I guarantee that group of people would withdraw from Nike. I mm. guarantee you that. I guarantee you. Now, what Nike is doing, they're drawing a line in the sand. Like, all right, we stand on this side. So we, we you know, if we're behind you. Okay. We, but we can talk all the anti-Negro stuff all day. And uh, I think y'all saw that interview with uh, one of the Jewish uh, music execs. I think it was on Breakfast Club. And he was just straight up like, yeah, you know, I let all that, you know, hateful music ride because everyone has mouths to feed. So I got to feed my family. He straight up said that. So he's saying they're doing it for the money. They're doing it for the check at the expense of us and our communities. We're allowed to tear down our own community so they can eat. And yeah, we can wear the Nikes when we are uh, stepping on each other, right? You know what them black Air Force Ones mean, man? 
Nikes. You got to wear that. God is on your feet while you do demon time, man. Put it together, man. You wouldn't do that in no MHOEs, man. Hey, I got the MHOE threes. You got the MHOE threes? Hey, look out for MHOEs, man. All day. Because we need it, man. Because this ain't no play. I don't care how big you are. If you say something that is deemed anti-Semitic by this group of people, protected group of people, right? Mm. We're going to stop doing business with you, right. right? We're going to stop, stop doing business with you. So this is unprecedented and it sends a loud yeah. message yeah. to anyone who dare try to make a statement. Because you know everybody want their money. I'm, I'm about to get this LeBron clip. LeBron just spoke on it. Top battle keeping us informed. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, they don't want to lose that check, man. They're making it real clear. And they're even really making themselves, you know, sometimes the devil want to be exposed, you know. They like to try to tell on, you know what I'm saying? They'll make contracts with you and then when they get exposed, they want to Try to put the light on you and show the awake people what kind of, you know, uh, brainwash, chattel, cattle, goyim they have going. And they see our own, they make our own people speak all this nonsense against our own brother Kyrie or Kanye. And they're laughing in the background like, <laughs> we making them say that or else they're going to lose their jobs. They're having fun watching these people cower to them, cower in fear of losing money and power. But what LeBron's really doing is losing respect. What Stephen A really doing is losing respect. Ice Cube, whoever ain't standing with Yeezy, whoever ain't standing with Kyrie is really losing respect. From the independent minds, right? Not the dumbasses, right? The Nuggets that seen clearly, Dragonfly perspective. Retweet something, cause remember this is a reshare, retweet. That's it. Huh. It sends a loud message like you better remain silent. Dr. Boyce Watkins put up a post today. But you notice how all of these black billionaires, so called people, when there's a serious black crisis, they remain quiet. Mm. Right? Nothing from Jay Z, mm. nothing from Diddy. Nothing from Fat Joe. Nothing from none of these people. It's ironic to me. Mm. It's ironic to me. All I'm saying is let's play it fair all the way across the board. Let like what black leader do we really have that we're all waiting to hear the voice of this one black leader? Our people have been destroyed for lack of knowledge, man. Shout out to Hip Hop Uncensored, man. Dig on HipHopUN.com. I like that the bro's breaking down, you know, some consciousness, man, some perspective, man. Unlike what you're about to hear out this jabroni LeBron James, man. Right after we dodge, we definitely got to dodge this hijack, man, because anybody that would start their advertisement that way got to be on that. Uh, Foo Grizzle, man, Foo Grizzle, man, you know what I'm talking about, man. They're they going to ask uh, LeBron about some of this. Let me skip ahead. Of course, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, used to doing, you know, in between, in between games, what position you are in, um, if you are, um, promoting or soliciting or, or, and he has since, uh, stop episode while we kicked that, you know, out of the archives because it was hate conversation going on there. I'm not sure. Um, if you want to ask me a question, you can ask me. I can't speak for 449 players. Sure. Um, you know, certainly your position, you've been in, in the position of the best. To speak for, yeah. for the um, just, and they're going to keep asking these players this Kyrie question. This is a way of trying to lynch more people. They get one person that stands with yay or Kyrie, they're going to come after him. They already know the price is going up, right? <laughs> hey, the price of fame is going up. It's going to come at the price of losing respect, the cost benefit ratio, the price, the cost, the cost of doing something can outweigh the benefit of it. And the benefit can outweigh the cost. 
So anything that you're doing, you got to weigh it and say, does the benefit of doing this outweigh the cost or does the cost outweigh the benefit? Kyrie saying the cost of losing myself outweighs the benefit of this check right now. Kanye saying the benefit or the cost of not speaking up outweighs the benefit of doing business with these people. LeBron is saying, shit, <laughs> the benefit of me uh, <laughs> speaking against Kyrie, the benefit of me not taking up for Kyrie outweighs the cost of me taking up for Kyrie. I want that check, boss. I just, yeah, yeah, I can tell you this. Uh, it's simple. Um, me personally, I don't condone any hate um, to any kind, to any race, um, to Jewish communities, to black communities, to Asian communities. Um, you guys know where I stand. And um, it's part of the reason why I didn't air. The Y'all know where I stand. You know who he's talking to me, <laughs> You guys know where I stand. Leave me alone. Remember that one thing I did? I, I I took it down. I corrected myself. Remember, I'm a good, I'm a good slave, boss. The shop episode. Why we kicked that, you know, out of the archives because it was hate conversation going on there, um, and I don't represent that. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, there's no place in this world for it. There's nobody can, can benefit from that. And um, yeah. nobody can benefit from having a conversation or watching the documentary. The documentary is all about hate to you, LeBron. This is deep. And I believe, um, you know, what Kyrie did um, caused some harm to a lot of people. Uh, By dropping a link to an Amazon documentary. It caused harm to a lot of people. Oh, Brian, Brian. Down with the go along, get along game. See, everybody's been exposed, whether you're down with them or whether you're down, you know what I'm saying, or up with the awakening or the awareness of the investigation of yourself, of the unity of our tribe. It's not anti anybody. It's it's pro it's pro us, just like they're pro them. But if we say that they're pro them, it's like, oh, you're saying that we're the mafia, Jewish cabal. No, you're just pro you. You're pro you. You look out for you and your people. We're the copper color races found here by the European. The same European is looking out for themselves. But we should be looking out for ourselves by putting the most high over everything. It's time to make a decision, man. You, you're wearing a Jackie Robinson float. <laughs> Boy, you better stand on it. You better stand on it like Jackie do, man. Rest of power, Jackie Robinson. You better stand on it. I don't think you see clearly or maybe you have made your choice. Um, and he has since, uh, over the last, I think today, or was it yesterday? He apologized. Um, but he caused some harm and, um, and I think it's unfortunate, but I don't, um, I don't stand on, um, the position to harm people when it comes to your voice or your platform or. or so Kyrie just wanted to harm people with his platform or did he leave a link to peak interest or to get any type of information flowing that is true. Was there anything true in the documentary? We're going to belly flop. Let's see if we have a hard time finding some true information. Or, or, or anything. And so it doesn't matter um, what color your skin is, how tall you are, um, what position you are in. Um, if you are... Um, promoting or soliciting or, or or saying harmful things to any community um, that harm people um, then I don't I don't I don't respect it I don't I don't I don't condone it considering so you don't condone Kyrie for leaving a link to an Amazon Prime documentary about I would say yo people but we just don't know Damn it, we just don't know. 
We're talking about King James, right? Yeah, King James, right? I said King James. <laughs> Let's go. Considering you do identify that his actions as being harmful to, to people, I, what do you believe could be a resolution for him to get past the current suspensions that he has with the Nets and Nike? I, I don't know. Because um, at the end of the day, Kyrie is his own man. Um, he stands up in front of the media and, and, and speaks. Um, he is a man. He has a great, he's a great family. I mean, he's a great. I love the kid. Well, he's not even a kid anymore. He's, not, he's thirty. He just said that the other day in his press. I was like, it's insane. Um, I don't, I don't know the, the direction, the steps that he take. Um, but he's apologized for what he said. Um, you know, and I hope that he understands that what he said was harmful to a lot of people. You know, and um, Kyrie would say, what did I say? I just left a link on my social media to a documentary that I did not do. You looking down because you're looking like a fool. King James, King Charles, first Europeans. What did he say? He apologized for what he said. What did he say that was hateful? What did he say? You know, and I hope that he understands that what he said was harmful to a lot of people. You're lying. You're a false witness. He said nothing. He left a link on Twitter. He said nothing. He can't speak or take responsibility for everything that another content creator creates. If he found one thing interesting and he left a link, that doesn't account for the entire totality of the work. So he didn't say anything. You are bearing false witness, LeBron. You was out of code. You know, and um, well, we, we as humans, none of us are perfect, but I hope he understands how, you know, what he did or um, the actions that he took was just harmful to a lot of people. Um, mm. I really didn't get into it too much. Um, but I understand that. I didn't get in. How could you not get into it, Bron? Ain't this the time to get into it? If it's this important to Kyrie, why wouldn't you investigate it? I will respect you more if you say, I looked into it, I watched it, and then say, hey, it was atrocious. Uh -huh. It was the worst thing ever, but to not even get into it or look into it, you don't have no opinion in, bro. It, it wasn't even worth you getting into, right? Something as important as Kyrie is standing on that he's losing his job, could lose his career, losing his sponsors. You can't even get into it. For your brother, you can't get into it. You can just get into this, huh? You can just get into this Lakers stuff, huh? It's a damn shame, and we see clearly. We ain't never saw so clearly in a whole long, in a very long time. But damn it, today we see clearly. King Jay. And that when you when you hurting anybody, um, I understand that. That is just common sense. Wow. Last two. Wow. LeBron, sticking with the theme of social consciousness, you've been very vocal about civic engagement, and the league is actually shutting down games on Tuesday to encourage voting. Why do you think, in your opinion, it's actually necessary to do that? Uh, I think from from the from the black community, and 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 obviously our league is predominantly black athletes, black players, black men. Um, our our, our um, community. Um, we talk and speak about change a lot. Um, so in order to have change, we have to get out and actually put our mouths and put our hands and put our pens or pencils to the polls. Yeah, he just said that. This? He just said that, boss. He said to have a change, I got to just... One more time. Game. One more time. Dodge the hijack. Taking us to the metasphere, man. <laughs> One more time, man. This is this is LeBron's plan for change to go out and vote, y'all. With a Jackie Robinson hat on. Damn, damn, damn. July. Um so in order 
to have change, we have to get out and actually put our mouths and put our hands and put our pens or pen. What do you think Kyrie was just doing? What do you think Yeezy's doing? Putting his mouths, their hands, their pens. But then if they say something against those that have been oppressing in any way, in any way, financially oppressing, psychologically oppressing, This is oppression, you know, uh, when you man, when you see a whole front row court side yamakas and fight anti-Semitisms, this is oppression. It's financial to psychological. You know, oppression. You know what I'm saying? You show up to the man's job just to taunt him with your dumbass shirts and the dumbass looks on your faces. This is oppression. These are the same faces that I watch us hang from the gall gallows, man. <laughs> hang off the trees, the nagas, the negus, the nagas. Same pressure now they got these turncoat billy bob <laughs> billy bob thornton that's not, not hey man shout out to billy bob thornton man. He, 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 he might be cool man he might be hot check for me man he's billy bob weaving person now no you don't no you don't let's hear it, man marginalized group let's hear it from our brother right Let's go. I'm gonna try to go to the right, right to it. Oops, none of them. Oh, shout out to Quest X, man, dropping that drop, man. Let's go. Are our allies, because at the end of the day, white supremacy is the ultimate goal. Okay, God. I told you guys, and I will sit and remain consistent. I do not and did not like, and what turned me off to Shannon Sharp was the whole Hennessy and black and mild in the mouth, little slick he used to pull. And he used to try to act like he the uncle, that uncle that's at the at the club, or the uh, uncle that's at the, the cookout. Because not everybody has an uncle like that. Black folks are not a monolith. And, and, when, and the louder that he got a tap on the head and a clap from Skip Bayless, he performed and performed and performed. And I knew then, I knew then, about Shannon Sharp. Well, funny, ironically, today, I don't. Th I think this Kyrie Irving situation is going to bring down a lot of other people. I think I'm, some people think that they're going to be able to bully Kyrie Irving and, and and just destroy him. This is going to have a negative effect on the NBA and the NBA media. Mm. It's going to have. You already got basketball players like Nick Young starting to speak out and say that this is unacceptable. That the media is downright being evil when it comes to this whole Kyrie Irving situation. And I hope other people start to wake up and start to call it out. And I especially love the fact that Shannon Sharp is getting dragged through the mud today on Twitter and on social media everywhere. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I don't want to hear nothing from black folks who want to comment in the comment section. Well, he's a brother and we got to... You know, not everybody thinks, and like you said, we're not a monolith. Yes, black folks are not a monolith, but when we, when you have bad actors amongst you, you need to ostracize them. Shannon Sharp is one of those bad actors, just like uh, Stephen A. Smith, bad actor. Oh, and oh my God, don't even get me started on this Jason Whitlock. A broken clock is, is right twice a day. Yes, Jason Whitlock was absolutely correct with his statement. Where are these black power supermen? in the NBA, who's supposed to be activists right now, standing up for Kyrie. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Fine, that's them. All right? They're the softest generation of basketball players I've ever seen in my life, period. When you're rocking a skirt and, and, and all this other, and wearing dresses to fashion shows, I don't expect you to have a backbone as a man, especially nowadays in America. Hey. So <laughs> Damn. All right, man, he popping off, man. Shout out to Quest X. He's talking about, you know, the Shannon Sharp situation, man. Let's 
tune in to see what this, um, you know, and I appreciate the Sharp Brothers, man, for you know everything they've done in the league, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I watched the Sharp Brothers perform in the Gladiator Arena, man, and, you know, pop off many a Sunday afternoons, man. But now we're seeing what's really going on in my bone, man, and who's controlling it, who's controlling who, who's pulling the strings. Why are we against our own people instead of understanding where they're coming from? You don't agree with, as a, I need to know these things. Yep, I do too. I'm, I'm curious. When did you learn? What? what? Yep. Because of the blowback? Back it up. Hold on. You seen your agent, your stepmom, and your dad to meet? You didn't meet with them? Mm. So what did you learn? I'm just trying to figure out. Back it up. I'm a human being learning from all walks of life, and I intend to do so with an open mind and a willingness to listen. There are several things that we can call Kyrie Irving and we can say about Kyrie Irving. Open-mindedness is not one of those things. Well, NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp did not mince words when the topic of Kyrie Irving came up. Hold on, Skip. Where is I'm sorry? I thought all apologies, something has to say I'm sorry. Yep. Hold on. You send your agent, your stepmom, and your dad to meet? You didn't meet with them? Mm -hmm. So what did you learn? I'm just trying to figure out. This is in re White man just like, <laughs> hold on, man, really straight. Come on, man. Come on, man. Dodge the hard jet. <laughs> White man just like, uh-huh, keep going. Buck, knock a buck. Dance, knock a dance. He, he just animated, about to bust out his soup. Marshmallow chest. <laughs> Shannon Sharp busting out his soup. Uh, man, I mean, <laughs> he's over there just popping off, man, performing for, for Skip, man. He's just performing for Skip. Just like the homie Quest said, he just going crazy like it personally is offensive to him. He reminded me of this uh, dude on the uh, TYT flow, right? They're acting the same as another buck dancing, back, <laughs> back breaking knocker, trying to break the back of a knocker, man. They always use their own people. But the film uncovers the true identity. This jabroni right here. Speaking for them, notice they let us pop off. They want us to see us telling us with his Nike shirt on, right? <laughs> they want marshmallow suit wearing Shannon Sharp <laughs> to be popping off while they stay quiet so that we can discipline our own people, right? Man, you see this play a mile away. In reference to Irving sending his agent, stepmom, and father to meet with the Anti-Defamation League. And I'm still sitting in the seat standing. Irving chose not to attend. Much like when the Holocaust Museum of Los Angeles invited Chicago rapper guy after his anti-Semitic comments, he denied, bashed them publicly, and the institution received an up. So they keep comparing Kyrie with Kanye, <laughs> the rapper guy, not the... Billionaire tycoon Kanye, right? Just the rapper guy. Listen to this again. And this is TYT again. Same network. <laughs> what spin do they have? Why did Revolt take this interview down? Why are they all working together? Why aren't they defending the truth of what the investigation is about? Well, well, because they got to rock for their side for the deception. They got to rock for their people. Diddy got to rock for Diddy's people. <laughs> this is Diddy's people. You know, Diddy got to rock for Diddy's people. All skin folk ain't kin folk, man. And all kin folk ain't kind folk, man. That's why, man. Uptick of threats and hate. Where, where is this open mindedness? I just want to know, Skip, what part of the documentary, if you saw it, do you agree with what part of the doc? Who got to explain all this to you? Who got to explain what part of this he agree with, what part he don't? He just left a link to a Jeff Bezos platform. Whatever's on Jeff Bezos platform is on Jeff Bezos platform. He left a link to something on Jeff Bezos platform. We're not asking Jeff Bezos to explain what he likes about it. And what he don't look at his big old eyes 
buck dancing, got big eyes, man. Look at these big old eyes. No, he got a, he's mad. He's turned up. He's triggered. He's emotions. Emotional. He's in his feelings. He got, he got the stones to tell Kyrie that he needs to explain what he likes and doesn't like about a public a public publication on a public platform on a public network that's for you as a public to decide not for him to tell you what you should like or not like a movie doesn't come out and Denzel doesn't have to tell you what he likes or doesn't like about it he could play a serial killer like training day popping up or whatever he didn't got to say well I played that role but I want to apologize because you know it had these elements to it against my people and I'm not anti-negro he didn't have to explain that American history X could pop off you could play Nazis you could play you know uh, Remy and higher learning you could play all these racist ass characters you don't have to say oh well this is what I agree with about the part about the dialogue, that's what I don't agree with. So why does Kyrie have to explain about a fucking link, man? It's a link. You watch the doc if you want to. You say what you like and don't like about it. Look at these big ass eyes trying to tell him. Marshmallow man, Michelin man want to tell him. <laughs> oh, Kyrie need to tell us what he like and don't like. He don't got to say shit. Either you like the link or you don't like the link. Or you keep it mother sucking pushing. What part of the documentary, if you saw it, do you agree with? What part of the documentary of the book, if you read it, you don't agree with? I need to know these things. Skip over here, fake writing, like, yeah, nigger, nigger, nigger. <laughs> he ain't writing nothing. He just <laughs> letting angry. Angry Marshmallow Man pop off. Right? Yep, I do too. I'm, I'm curious. When did you learn? What? what? Yep. Because of the blowback? You was going to stand on it. He said I stand. And I'm going I'm to stand fast on it. Mm -hmm. You was big and bad. Had your chest all out. Because he said I have an army behind me. Yes. What happened to your... Where'd it go? Uh, Skip just feeding them lines. What happened to your army? He's talking about the creator's army. Now you're going to mock the creator? I'm no different than the next human being because I'm not alone. I have a whole army around me. I do not believe any apology that does not <clears throat> start with, I'm sorry. Yep. The greatest apology is change behavior. But it must start with, I'm sorry. Who's he apologizing to for leaving the link? He took responsibility for anybody that could have hurt because he's so popular. Maybe someone could watch this and and just start hating these other people, right? So fine, I'll take responsibility. He even later put out his I'm sorry's and apologies. But then TYT said, I don't buy it. Your publicist wrote it. You don't care about that. Screw you. We're going to hang you anyway. And our own, our own people, <laughs> right? Or is it more of a Charles's people? You know, Roman Empire, Emperor Charles, leading the invasion into the Americas, hijacking the Inca. Or maybe they just fitting right in to the Genghis Khan invasion against the Preston John. Yeah, maybe Sharp is more connected with Charlesy. And maybe Kyrie is more connected with the Preston. And maybe this energy he has stored up for him has to do with an ancient love song, an ancient frequency. You want I'm sorry? Is that what you want, Shannon? Is that what you want, Skipper? With your fake-ass notes? That my post offended said group of people stand on the Kyrie be a man of your words mm -hmm. Shannon Sharp nailed it in the wake of the backlash the Brooklyn 
Shannon Sharp now. All right. So for the dismount, man, you know, you're going to get a little peace, a little couple of minutes of this doc. We're going to see what's in it, man. And, you know, uh, if you've been surfing the wave, you, you got a backup link to it, you know, just in case it does go missing off the Amazon platform. You know, uh, hey, steady water flowing. It's a bunch of these quakes popping off, you know, different areas. They say they're moving eastward. It's all my Bay Area and Nagas, Cali and Nagas, period. You know what I mean? Just be on your pivot, man. And, you know, uh, all praise the world, man. This, this, you know, unrest has to happen so that we can finally reach a point of rest. What's interesting is that you know, this key or chi, <laughs> key hawa hawa, you know, it's just a big ass place, man. It just seems like an interesting place. And I've never obviously uh, explored key hawa hawa, but, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd say something that's very beautiful about this uh, vortex here. Because it's named after hawa hawa. <laughs> it's named after hawa hawa and the HUA. It's just the same H A or W A W A W A W A H of you phonetically spell it out. But Hawa is the revelation, is the security. And you don't got no revelation or breath without security. And you don't got no security without your breath, my name. Hawa. H A W A, H A W A H, all the same frequency. Ha, uh, wa. And it's just beautiful to see it all over the place, man. On Hawaii's green earth, man. Ki or ka, wa, wa. That's beautiful, man. But stay charged up. Stay on alert. Stay in DEF CON. Because <laughs> DEF CON 3 is about alert, man. Increased in force readiness above that required for normal readiness. So stay on alert. That's not hate speech. That's alert speech. And it's a defensive, which is why it's called deaf. For defense, man. For defense, man. Not offense. No one's attacking you. Defense for the tribes. For the tribe tribe. Let's belly fly for the dismount again. One more time. Fair use in your caboose bow, <laughs> caboose bow, section 107, man. We're going to do some scholarship teaching, some news report, make some comments, man. You know what I mean? Some criticism, some research. Drop nation, let's go. Joshua 24, verse 14. Now, therefore, fear a Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods, man. M-H-O-E, which your parents served on the other side of the flood before Noah and in Egypt. Serve your power, Hawa. Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Now Ham had a son named Mizraim, who would be the father of Egypt, or his most ancient name, Kemet, which is the ancient Egyptian word for black. The ancient Egyptians called themselves Kam or Kam O, which means black people or black god people. Everyone knows by seeing countless pictures of Egyptian drawings that the ancient Egyptians were a race of brown black people. It is also known the fact that the other black nations ruled as the pharaohs of Egypt as well. The black Libyans ruled over Egypt in the 22nd to 23rd dynasties under Shoshank I, Orsakhan II, and Eaput II. This was in the BC era, over a thousand years before the Muslim Arabs invaded Egypt or Libya. The Nubians of Sudan and Ethiopia, or Kush, also ruled Egypt during the 25th dynasty. Their pictures from 2000 or 3000 years ago show them to be black, despite the white Egyptian Arabs who we commonly see today in North Africa. That is a known fact that when white people visit Egypt today, the locals immediately recognize them as Kawaga, which means foreigners despite what is portrayed in Hollywood movies. But when African Americans visit Egypt, they are often mistaken for native Egyptians and are referred to as Masri or Mizri, meaning Egyptians in Arabic, which is based off the Hebrew word Mizraim for Egypt. 
In many cases, African Americans have also been referred to as Ibn Yaku by the Arab locals when visiting the historical pyramids. <laughs> so we go over there instead of being right here where Egypt really popped off at. 1,200,000 acres around the Grand Canyon has been blocked off, my nigga. 1,200,000 acres around the Grand Canyon is blocked off for a reason. <laughs> yeah, and they call you sons of Jacob when they see your phenotypes. Remember, uh, Joseph had it on lock, man, so they know what the Hebrew look like. They know what to compare it to because the artifacts that they're taking from the Grand Canyon and putting over there look like you. If Atlantis is here, Egypt is here. The copper color race is found here. Now, should Kyrie talk about this part and what he agrees and disagrees with? We are identifying ourselves. You feel like you were, uh, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, casualty of war, or collateral damage. Man, just get out the classroom. You don't have to agree with everything we say about ourselves. You don't have to agree with our investigation. Kyrie don't have to explain what he agrees and disagrees with. It's for you to investigate. He's just giving you a breadcrumb. So far, we're talking about Egypt. You know, we belly flopped until like an hour in. <laughs> I mean, go back and get the drop. It's a lot of drop we skipped ahead of. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But in all this drop, you're going to find something offensive if you're looking for it. And you're going to find some drop if you're looking for it. It's about your intention. Why are you investigating? To hate or to love yourself? Let's go. Ibn Yakul basically means son of Jacob in Arabic. So why would the local Arab Egyptian refer to black people as the sons of Jacob or the Egyptians. In the world today, many Christians are realizing that there has been a huge cover-up of real biblical history. Satan knows that if he can hide the true identity of the ancient Egyptians and the sons of Ham, he can keep the real Israelites from waking up to their true identity. So how has this mastermind deception continued for so long? It's easy. The powers to be simply have to present another people to the world to be the Egyptians and the Israelites of the Bible using the mass media or Western education. The mass media for centuries has whitewashed the true black identity of the ancient Egyptians. They know that the head bust, the stone statues, the mummified pharaohs of Egypt and the pictures on the walls in Egypt depict a different Egyptian than what is shown on TV today. This is why on TV, when our channels report from North Africa, Egypt, Israel, or the Middle East, they always show pictures of white-skinned Arabs. Mm. On the movie screen, the Egyptians are just plain white, which is plain wrong. According to biblical history, Abraham's son, Ishmael, is birthed by a black Egyptian woman named Hagar. In the Bible, she's referred to as Hagar the Egyptian. Hagar later gets a wife for her son, Ishmael, from black Egypt. Now, this would technically make the Ishmaelite Arabs back then and today black. After all, if Abraham was a black-skinned Shemitic man and Hagar was a black-skinned Hamite, their offspring should also be black. This can be proven by the historical writings of the ancient Arabs. Now, 7th century AD Arab poet Meskin al-Darimi quoted, I am Meskin for those who know me. My color is dark, the color of the Arabs. Now, Arab linguist Ibn Mandur, who lived around 1260 AD, wrote in his book, Lisan al-Arab, that, quote, the predominant complexion of the Arabs is dark, brown is black, and that of the non-Arabs is white. Now, Ibn Mandur also quoted that non-kinky hair is the kind of hair that most non-Arabs like the Romans and Persians have, while kinky hair is the kind of hair that most Arabs have. So if Ishmael had a black Egyptian mother named Hagar, and he also had an Egyptian wife, the evidence of black Egyptian physical traits should be seen in people with true Egyptian ancestry or true black Arab ancestry. The 
truth is, the white Arabs and the white European Jews' real biblical identity has been hidden today because the term Semitic has been used to describe them since they currently live in biblical Semitic lands. So, I mean, the Arabs should be making a fuss, right? Because this, this, you know, uh, content creator, this researcher is, you know, he ain't just talking about Jewish. He's talking about the fake everything. Anything that is not, you know, lining up with true identity. So everybody, including the so-called Arab today, the so-called everybody today will be against you getting this drop asking these questions and investigating ourselves because something about investing in ourselves pulls the skirt up on all you hijacks however maternal dna studies reveal that the true origin of today's arabs and jews comes from the many sons and women of Jaffa, mm. who dwelt in central asia most notably modern day southern russia western russia aka the pale of settlements uzbekistan kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. The Seljuk Turks, the Oghuz Turks, the Uzbeks, Kurds, and other Turkish hunters groups would eventually over time migrate west to the Middle East and Anatolia, which is modern day Turkey. They would adopt Islam as their religion and then conquer North Africa, the Levant, and Jerusalem under the latter name, the Ottoman Turkish Islamic Caliphate. In 1948, the European people of Turkish, Hunnic, Bulgar, Slavic, Khazar, and Germanic descent who converted to Judaism would conquer British Mandate Palestine, otherwise known as Arab Palestine, renaming it Israel. So as you can see, the true ethnicity of Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the Israelites cannot be taught correctly in the church or on TV unless we have a clear understanding of the ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians. This is because the biblical Ishmaelite Arabs were a people were heavily mixed with black Egyptian DNA and the Israelites mixed with the black Egyptians for 400 plus years before they left for Moses to journey to the land of Canaan. In addition, two of the 12 tribes of Israel, Ephraim and Manasseh, will come from the stock of a black Egyptian woman named Asana. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asanath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore unto him. And to Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So to erase the false teaching we have gotten for years, we need to see what ancient historians had to say about the skin color or appearance of the ancient Egyptians. Now Herodotus, a Greek historian who lived and spent time in Egypt during 480 BC, made a statement about a group of people called the Colchians who resembled the Egyptians but lived in above the Turkey-Armenia boundaries along the western slope of the Caucasus Mountains near the Black Sea in what is now called the European country Georgia. Now he quoted, For the fact is I soon came to realize myself and then heard from others later that the Colchians are obviously Egyptian. When the notion occurred to me, I asked both the Colchians and the Egyptians about it and found that the Colchians had better recall the Egyptians than the Egyptians did of them. Some Egyptians said that they thought that the Colchians originated with Pharaoh's Sesostris army, but I myself guessed their Egyptian origin, not only because of the Colchians are dark skin and curly hair, but more importantly because Colchians, Egyptians, and the Ethiopians are the only peoples in the world who practice circumcision and who have always done so. Now, Ischialus, who lived around 520 to 456 BC was a Greek poet who admitted in his literary work, The Suppliants, that the Egyptians in his time were black. Now he quoted, the crews must be Egyptian for their black limbs stand out clear to the eye against their white tunics. So Kyrie, Kyrie should be apologizing about this and offending any Egyptians, offending any Arabs, offending any Jews. He didn't create the doc. He's sharing information that you can take something or you can leave it. But he now has to say, I'm not anti-Semitic. He's not have to say, I'm not anti-Arabic. He didn't have to say, I'm not anti-Egyptian. Why are you just focusing on one group of people? And then when Kanye say they're controlling everything, you say he's crazy. But who's the one group of people that's trying to force an apology? 
not the Egyptians, not the Arabs. So who's controlling the media? He also quoted that the Egyptians are presented as having a dark complexion. The entire Egyptian army is said to be black by both the Danids and Danuis. When found from his lookout, he distinguishes the Egyptians in their first ship as their black limbs are shown from their white garments. Now, Aristotle, who lived in the 4th century BCE, a Greek scholar and philosopher, quotes this racist statement about the Egyptians. Those who are black are cowards like the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. The world is so confused right now that even though we see an agenda to whitenize the Egyptians, when black people or anybody non-white say that they are the Israelites, people say, nope, you are a Hamite Egyptian, or no, you are a Hamite Canaanite. These statements have been attributed to the so-called Negro and the so-called Native American Indian, which are bywords given to these people groups by the European sons of Japheth. Now, was this trickery and confusion prophesied in the Bible? God shall enlarge Japheth, that he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Uh -oh. and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So what are the cold, hard facts that cannot be disputed? Hashtag fact. Based on language, passed down traditions, the DNA haplogroup testing of ancient skeletons from Egypt, and what genetics is called matched likelihood index autosomal STR testing scores, the bloodline of the ancient Egyptians is not seen in the so-called Bantu's race. In all actuality, the bloodline of the ancient Egyptians can be seen in the Dogon tribe, the Fulani people, the Allure tribe, the Hausa people, the Beja, Afar peoples, and the Somalian tribes in the Horn of Africa. According to opposite 9th century Muslim geographer Aman al Yakubi, the Beja people in ancient times had kingdoms stretching from Aswan in South Egypt to Masawa in Eritrea. Now, some Egyptologists say linguistically the Beja tribe has similarities to the language of the ancient Egyptians, just like certain tribes in Somalia. Their language also falls to the Kush family of languages seen in Sudan and Nubia, which was a part of ancient southern Egypt in BC times. To top this off, a German-born 19th century Egyptologist Emily Bruce traced a certain clan of the Beja people to the Egyptian people of the 20th dynasty. Now, American physician and scientist Samuel George Morton proved in the 1844 A.D. Crania Egyptica study that there was a clear distinction between the Negro and Native Egyptians. With craniometric comparison of ancient Egyptian skulls and sub-Saharan Negro skulls from West Africa, Morton proved that the Egyptian ruling elite class of ancient Egypt had a different skull shape than the subservient slave class at the time. Now, whose skull matched up perfectly with the subservient slave class, which in the Bible was the Hebrew Israelites? The Sub-Saharan Bantu Negro skull. Now, this proves that the ancient Egyptians and the Sub-Saharan Bantu people were two different people. Now, to prove the claim that the Bantu's people are not the ancient Egyptians even more, let's examine the article called Ancient Egyptian Mummy Genome Suggests an Increase in Sub-Saharan African Ancestry in Post-Roman Periods by paleogeneticist and Professor Verena V.J. Shinoman at the University of Zurich with her co-partner, archaeogeneticist Professor Dr. Alexander <laughs> So Kyrie's supposed to be watching this and not be excited and not get any information from any abstract or any source. This is not a bunch of just, you know, casual malarkey and nigga talk. This is a reconner, a researcher, pulling together, you know, different sources. Now, I don't have to agree with everything, you know, this, this researcher say, and he ain't got to agree with everything in my classroom. But I can find drop so that I can investigate and get further understanding on. Kyrie just wants somebody like me or you to say, what can you build from this? Can you build anything from this? Instead of being, you know, ostracized and trying to, you know, be manipulated and humiliated and patted on his head bone to apologize for something he didn't do. By sharing information, he's sharing, he could be sharing this abstract right here. 
he could be talking about Egyptians. But to them, he's just talking about Jews. Daniel Pelzer from the Institute for the Science of Human History. Now this article proved that from the New Kingdom Egyptian period around 1388 BC to the Roman period around first century AD, the Sub-Saharan Bantu people were minimally present in Egypt. Their studies on the ancient Egyptian mummies and more modern Egyptian skeletal remains show that after the Roman period, DNA skeletal evidence proved that the Bantu Negro people brought their gene flow back from outside of Africa or Israel into Egypt. This, of course, was the emigration of remaining Israelites in Israel into Africa by way of Egypt. The common denominator in the oral history of where many Bantu tribes scattered in Africa claimed to have migrated from to get to their current location. Now, if a people claim to be one of the 12 tribes of Israel, then they need to be able to prove this using facts showing multiple connections to the ancient Israelites, not just the fact that they follow Torah. So we already have autosomal paternal DNA haplogroup markers from ancient Egyptian skeletons and craniometry studies proving that the so-called Negro was not a pure Egyptian. But what we can also use the language from ancient Israel during BC times, oral histories and traditions and customs to prove who was the real Israelites. Many Bantu's Negro African tribes, including the early indigenous Indians of the Americas, were found to contain similar DNA markers and language patterns that hinted to a common place of origin. <laughs> By using the language spoken in Israel prior to the emergence of King Saul, which is, by the way, Egyptian and Hebrew, we could track down the migration routes of the ancient Israelites. Now, this is not hard to believe or accept if we use critical thinking, because after spending 400 years in America, Negroes from West Africa have mastered the English language, forgetting the language of their forefathers. But this erasing of language did not happen with the mixed multitude of people that left with Moses during the Exodus. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. Now based on these scriptures, wouldn't true Israelites today still have some evidence of the Egyptian and Hebrew language in their dialect today? Wouldn't there be some proof? While investigating the Australian Aborigines in Australia, Professor A.P. Elkin of Sydney University in Australia came up with Aboriginal tribes in Australia displaying Semitic Mediterranean facial features with Egyptian words in their language. Now, the Hebrew Israelites were Semitic and they knew the language of the Egyptians. Now, such proof can be found in the Bible as Joseph was co ruler over Egypt during his time. Moses was learning the wisdom of the Egyptians, and King Solomon had alliances with the Egyptian pharaohs of Egypt. And remember, all this is happening in the old world, which is America. So, that might not be something that this uh, author or researcher, you know, is looking at. But that's all good because it's going to lead to the same truth about who you are. I'm not worried about if they think they're from Africa or not. That's not the context of the Kyrie tweet. Kyrie's popping off about, I know who I am. Who are you, Kyrie? <laughs> this person's giving them ammo. They don't want you to have no ammo, my naga. A few more minutes, and then you know, it might be we might got to do a part five Kyrie edition of Yeezy said it so much so as he was given the Canaanite city of Giza as a dowry gift for his marriage with an Egyptian princess. Now, evidence of Hebrew traditions, the Hebrew language, with also an Egyptian influence, can be seen in certain native Indian tribes. Yeah, they bring it into the indigenous Americans, Hebrews that are already here. Tribes but also in the Bantus Awe tribe, the Bantus Wolof Serer tribe, the Bantus Gadangme tribe, and the Bantus Nigerian Igbo tribe. Uh. Now let's get to the facts. In a manuscript written in the Mayan Quiche language, which is today spoken by the Quiche people in Guatemala, in 1554 AD, it tells a story from three Mayan Indians. A translator was able to decipher the story now in the story, the Mayans said that they were the descendants of some of the ten tribes of Israel that were exiled under the Assyrian king, Shalmaneser. While in Assyria, they decided to leave and emigrate to a different land. Some were left behind, but some made it. Now the text read in the Mayan language, These then were three nations of Quiches, and they came from where the sun rises in the east, descendants of Israel, 
of the same language and the same customs. Now, what is interesting is that the Mayans say that they are the sons of Yaqib. And the Aztecs and Mayans say that when they were forced to leave Israel or Tulan, they traveled south to the sea and then to the ocean. Now, based off a of direct study of the Native American Indians and ancient books such as Eels in America, or probabilities that the Americans were of that race written in 1650 AD by Thomas Thorogood, many Europeans believed that the Indians were descendants of the Northern Kingdom Israelites who were displaced by the Assyrian king, Shalmaneser. All the accounts of stories told by the Native Indians described their people as Israelites who left Israel during the reign of the Israelite king Hosea in the 8th century BC. But this is not the only thing that they described. Native Indians were known according to the Jesuits, Sephardic Gentile Jews, the Mormons, and other Europeans to exhibit the following Hebrew traditions. They performed their camp or people's division into tribes, such as the Israelites. Now, some of the tribes also wrote from right to left, just as in the Hebrew script. They followed two or three wheat harvests in one year. They didn't swear or take oaths. They didn't drink or commit adultery, and they believed in the Oracle Covenant. They also had an Ark of Bullroof, which was similar to the Ark of the Covenant. The tabernacle was carried by four priests only, and they pitched a tent facing the east. And they called their aunts and uncles, mother and father, which is seen in West Africa today. And they had cleanliness laws where women on their menses or at the childbirth had to be set apart for seven days. And on the eighth day, they were able to come back to the village. They did not eat pork. And as in the Hebrew leveret marriage, the widow had to marry the brother of the deceased husband. Now, circumcision was performed with stone knives, as in the Hebrew culture. And the Indians believed in Hades or a great pit for sinners, which they call papufo. The Indians wore a vestment similar to the Aaronitical robes of the high priests, and the first fruits were offered, such as corn, meat, and fish. They observed the year of Jubilee, which is seen in the Hebrew culture, and they uttered the word Hallelujah. The temple was where the Indians worshipped, and they sang and prayed and made offerings. And their worship of Yahuwah was known throughout many Indian tribes. Their notions of a theocracy was also seen and they had a belief in the administration of angels. Their language and dialect showed a Hebrew influence and they had the same manner of counting time as many of the ancient Hebrews. In the village they had prophets, high priests, and a king hierarchy and their divination rites were similar to the Aaronitical high priesthood. Now, the Udo Aztecan family consists of many different Indian tribes. Semitic, linguistic experts in Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew all have agreed that Hebrew and Egyptian can be found in the native Indians' dialect of the Udo Aztecan speakers. However, the truth is often suppressed of this knowledge to the outside world. Here are some of the tribes in the Udo Aztecan family who still retain evidence of their Hebrew ancestry in the language. Another knock. Dodge all hijacks. Yeah. Now let's clear some things up about the Hebrew language seen in different cultures today. Prior to 1948, the Ashkenazi European Jews spoke Yiddish, which is rooted in the Germanic, Slavic, and Turkish languages. Now these three languages have their roots in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, which is the land of Japheth, not Shem. Now, English, German, Dutch, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, all have roots to all Germanic languages. Now, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, and Romanian dialects are all based on the Romance language family, which also had its origin in the land of Japheth. 
such as Western Europe. The Sephardic Jews language Ladino is a Romance language derived from Old Spanish. Yiddish and Ladino were never spoken by the ancient Israelites. The native Indian Udaztecan language family for European linguistic experts began in Israel, but was later influenced by non-Semitic tongues, whoa, whoa. perhaps during their migration. Back it up. These French, Italian, and Romanian dialects are all based on the Romance language family, which also had its origin in the land of Jafet, such as Western Europe. The Sephardic Jews language, Ladino, is a Romance language. What is Ladino got to do with Latino? Huh? <laughs> Spanish, Greek, Turkish, Hebrew. Uh oh, let go. It's derived from Old Spanish. Yiddish and Ladino were never spoken by the ancient Israelites. The native Indian Udaztecan language family. For and you know. Especially with the Arabic flow, when you see ish, like Jewish, ish, te, ish, they're talking about a man. And like a more ish could also be more man. Uh oh. Ish toes a woman. A wife is a awa. Kind of like Eve. Uh oh. Whose original name, original name was Kawa. Because she is that breath. She's first lady, right? According to the <laughs> to the flow. So she is Hawa. She is the breath, the security. You know what I'm saying? She's being named after life itself. Because she's given life. She didn't invent that name. It's being attributed to her being the first woman of life or creation. But that ish is a man. It's getting real clear. For European linguistic experts began in Israel. Before it was hallelujah with a J, they got hallelujah with a W. Whoa, I ain't seen that before. <laughs> they changed the W's to the Y's and the J's, man. Wah. Why would they change it from the Wa? Why do you ignore the Wa? You call on the Ya or Hey Ya, but it's Hallelujah or Halawa. Hallelujah is Halawa. Praise Hawa. Do you see clearly with a dragonfly perspective? Yiddish and Ladino were never spoken by the ancient Israelites. Back it up consists of many different Indian tribes. Semitic linguistic experts in Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew all have agreed that Hebrew and Egyptian can be found in the native Indians dialect of the Udo Aztecan speakers. However, the truth is often suppressed of this knowledge to the outside world. Here are some of the tribes in the Udo Aztecan family who still retain evidence of their Hebrew ancestry in the language. It look like tone across the block, man. A lot of these pictures they're giving us is post 1800s, 1900s. They ain't going back to the 1400s, 1500s, my nigga. Now let's clear some things up about the Hebrew language seen in different cultures today. Prior to 1948, the Ashkenazi European Jews spoke Yiddish, which is rooted in the German. What Kyrie got to apologize for this? These are facts. Shannon Sharp wants to know what he agrees with and disagrees with. He agrees with the facts. They speak in Yiddish, not Picto Hebrew, not Paleo Hebrew, not Original Hebrew. The Germanic, Slavic, and Turkish languages. Now, these three languages have their roots in Eastern Europe and Central Asia which is the land of Jafet, not Shem. Bang. Now, English, German, Dutch, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, German. all have roots to all. German, which is why they're in Germany during their situation. You know what I'm saying? All Germanic languages. Now, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, and Romanian dialects are all based on the Romance language family, which also had its origin in the land of Jafet, such as Western Europe. 
The Sephardic Jewish language, Ladino, is a wrong. <laughs> Ladin, L A D I N. Not Latino. Ladin. South Tyrol and Northern Italy. Yeah, man. If you Ladino, you know, you're claiming to be a Marukan. Are we now, you know, mixing into other bloodlines, right? We see him clearly. Romance language derived from Old Spanish. Yiddish and Ladino were never spoken by the ancient Israelites. The native Indian Udastekan language family for European linguistic experts began in Israel, but was later influenced by non-Semitic tongues, perhaps during their migration settlements in the East on the way to the Americas. Mm, let's go. They acknowledged that the Udo Aztecan language began as a cradle language mix, which Semitic was a dominant component. Here we will see the proof. And this Egyptian flow make a lot of sense when you got the Tignac Titlin flow, the Toltec flow, you know, uh, all that happening, man, connected, man, <laughs> you know, with these uh, palaces and pyramids and all this stuff all throughout the Americas, Atlantis flow, wakey, wakey, we're talking about Ruka. <laughs> Now, proof about the Udo as second language having a Hebrew influence can be seen in the work done by linguistic expert Morris Swadesh in his article, Hebrew Influence in Zapotec Language in Southern Mexico. Also, linguistic expert Arno Liesberg in his article, Hebrew and Quechua, the Inca language of Peru, are alike in many ways. Also, a while everywhere. Go back to that map. Now, proof about the Udo as second language having a Hebrew influence can be seen in the work done by linguistic expert Morris Swadesh in his article, Hebrew Influence in Zapotec Language in Southern Mexico. Also, linguistic expert Arno Liesberg in his article, Hebrew and Quechua. You see the Hawa, H-U-A again, right? Like the key Hawa Hawa. Right, so indigenous like Josh Hawa, you can't hate on the Hawa, right? It means existence to exist. You see, Hawa no, Hawa Nuko, Hawa Nuko, Hawa Kavelika, man. You see, Hawa Kayo, <laughs> you see, Hawa, you know what I'm saying? Having a presence in a lot of these territories. You see Hawako over here? How many HUAs are you seeing? Count the HUAs, my naughty. You're not seeing Hayas. You're not seeing Yas. You're seeing Hawa, Hawa Ras. That's about five different places right here with the Hawa. Next to Cusco, <laughs> which means the navel, the center. We see him clearly. I mean, sure. should Kyrie apologize for this map? Maybe he just dropped a link to showcase this map. He, he should have said, man, I just wanted to show a map that I saw. Yeah, that's it. 
will say I'm sorry, Kyrie. It has some other stuff we don't like. About the indigenous people's connection with the Hebrew. They can't claim to be Jewish. Because then they got to say they were invaded. By Europeans. <laughs> they can't claim to be the ones invaded in America by Europeans, boss. Hiding in our tents. The Inca language of Peru are alike in many ways. Also, the Nahuto Aztec language has many similarities to the Egyptian language. If you Nahuto, Nahuto, Awawa. You drop the L, according to Francis Cartoonin, an analytical dictionary of Nahuto. The Europeans documented that when the Indians talked about their ancestors, it was basically what the Europeans read about the Israelites in the Bible. The Europeans said that the Indians did talk about a great prince that a long time ago brought them in a fleet to the Americas. The Indians described that God made one man and one woman, commanding them to live together and multiply. And how? And them taking journeys don't mean it came from Africa crossing the Atlantic, man. Coming from the east doesn't mean coming from Africa, man. This is what Horace Butler was on. East just means east. You could be in New York City and come from the east. You could be on some other land within the waters and be coming from where the sun rises, man. Don't keep making conjecture pointing to one continent. That's Darwinism, evolution, and all the hijack. Oh, we're independent thinkers. We're dumbasses, right? Kyrie's crazy for leaving the link. Maybe you can get some map drop. Maybe get some orientation. Maybe you can do some investigation. Why should he have to apologize as a free black man in America, right? Because you ain't free and you ain't black, Kyrie. You are the e -bree. Let go for the dismount. How in a famine he rained bread for them from heaven. He also said that during a time of drought and thirst, that God gave them water out of a rock. The Taino Indians of South America and the Caribbean are known to have Hebraisms in their language and culture. Now, Chief Joseph Amahura Riverwind of Arawak Taino descent described an ancient Taino song to break in Israel news as Shima, Shima, Naina, Papaska, Hoya, Ya. It is translated into English as listen, listen, people, as you gather together, we will dance before the Creator. Now, this is eerily similar to the Hebrew Shima prayer Shima, Yisrael, Yahuwah. Eloinu Yahuwah Akkad in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Now, for the Taino Arawak people, the name of the Supreme God or Great Spirit is Yahya. Now, the Cherokee Indians who were found to have the maternal DNA haplogroup T, specific to ancient Egypt, called themselves the Ani Ketuwaya and called the Creator Yohiwa. Then the Cherokee were also known to carry an ark into battle. Celebrate seven feast holidays. They have cities of refuge, abstinence from eating pork. And all we got to do is keep going because they might tell us, oh, they said this. But who, which day are we talking about? The hijack? The ones that came later are talking, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. That's the modern Indian so called Native American chant. Is that the same chant they were doing in the 1600s, my nigga? Or was it, did they change it to, hey, yeah, uh, hey, yeah, uh, hey, yeah? Uh. Huh? So we got to dodge all hijack at all costs. And they held the number four and seven sacred, possibly secondary to the fact that they kept the seventh day of rest, which is seen in the Hebrew Israelite culture. Now, the Chippewa Indians called themselves Anish Nabi and believed they were from the tribe of Ephraim. In Hebrew, Anshe Nabi means people of the prophet, as the word Nabi means prophet, and Anshe can also mean people of, as in the word Anshe Shesed, which means people of benevolence or people of kindness and mercy. Now note in First Chronicles chapter 6, a Levite man, Elkanah, was the father of Samuel, the prophet who lived in the mountains of Ephraim. So with all this proof, let us turn now to the Bantu Negro people. I'm going to skip ahead for the dismount right here, chapter 6. Let go.
Hey, you get this drop, man. <laughs> I showed y'all how to get it. Let's go. Wars. One, two, pestilence, earthquakes, and then famines. Three, deceivers who claim to follow Christ. What would, Ky what would Kyrie be apologizing for, man? Let's get it for the dismount. Get the full drive, man. We just belly flopping. That's Matthew 24, 4 and 5. False prophets, false Christ. Number four, shout four. The people of Israel shall return to the land. That's in Ezekiel 37, verse 21 and 22. Thus saith the Lord God, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations. Whatsoever they have gone. The time is now for the so-called Negroes in America to wake up to their true Israel identity. The Most High is calling his chosen people to come out of Babylon in a system of deception. Will you be the one that has ears to hear and makes the right choice? It's a funny thing, Mary. Once someone offers you a choice, you can't ever go back to the way it was before. If you don't try, when you go out of here, you'll find your pride is shrunk to ten inches. If you do try, well, if you do try, you may have something to be really proud of. What do you say? All right, I'll try. This is all we're looking for. So here we are today in the 21st century, and we are seeing a mass movement where black people in America are seeking out their identity. From paying attention to social media trends, I believe most people today would say that the common consensus is that black people are finding out that their identity is not defined by the word black, Negro, or African American, Bang. or with the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. But as we all know, because of years of being taught incorrectly in church that we are the Gentiles, when the Most High reveals the truth to his people, we have a choice to either accept it or reject it. Either way, the truth doesn't change. So why is this awakening happening globally? If you look to the scriptures, we can see why this awakening is now happening. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, 
Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Oh, wow. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you. And ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it, For Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it, For Joseph the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. To fully understand the biblical component of this awakening of Negroes to their true Israelite identity, we have to go back to the past. So the plantation system, in a smaller and modified way, continued, and can be found in the South today. Much of the work is still done by hand. Much of the wealth still comes from one crop, cotton. Most of the workers are Negroes who live on the plantation. Today, the man who owns the plantation is called the landlord. The man who works. Wow. So they made these Hebrews slaves on their own land. You're not supposed to see bondage again, man. <laughs> Look at this naga here. <laughs> House naga here. He ain't picking cotton. And it's called the landlord. It's like you have landlords with your apartments and everything else. The slave master is called the landlord, man. Wakey, wakey. Work the farm are tenants. And so... The people that work the farm are the tenants. So your landlord might say, hey, man, can you make sure the grass is green? <laughs> Upkeep the house for me. Get that back. The landlords <laughs> are the slave masters. And the people that work the farm are the tenants, man. I can't make this stuff up. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, Take thee one stick, and write upon it, For Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and... It's all about the tribe coming back together again, to hit the X, to hit the Tau. Last letter in the Hebrew, the mark, the sign, the covenant. Write upon it, For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions and join them one to another and to one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. To fully understand the biblical component of this awakening of Negroes to their true Israelite identity, we have to go back to the past. So the plantation system, in a smaller and modified way, continued and can be found in the... Look at this little naga right here, sitting watching his people pick cotton for the slave master, landlord. And we're the tenants of today. Much of the work is still done by hand. Much of the wealth still comes from one crop, cotton. Most of the workers are Negroes who live on the plantation. Today, the man who owns the plantation is called the landlord. The men who work the farm are tenants. And so the landlord the laborers and the land are still the important part. Look at these happy-go-lucky niggas. This would be Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith, man. Man, for real, for real. Ain't nothing new. To the plantation system. Today, this owner has less land than the plantation owner of the past. And he lives in a house that is less pretentious than the great mansions of earlier times. The tenant farmers and their families live on the plantation. Each family has a small house, which they rent together with a section of land. After Abraham freed the slaves on... 
They got to rent their land. They can't own their land. They got to rent their land. Hey, we'll be back, man. You know, with Yeezy Discourse Part 5. Get some more of this documentary. And just continue to surf the wave in real time. <coughs> We're here popping off, man. Enjoying a nice uh, session with my Nagas, man. And it's a real session, man, for the Nagas to come together and just see clearly, man, and continue to see clearly that this is our vision. Blue, purple, red, to have the protection, to be protected on our own land. In covenant with Hawaii. A hot to the pro dragon chat. And, uh, you know, we see the vision, man. The royals, the cold keepers, the green dragons that they're slaying. We're talking renewal, we're talking life, we're talking holy grail, we're talking prester. We're talking a covenant with Hawaii forever. When the blue and the red come together, we get the purple crown, the highest chakra, man. So keep surfing away with a nugget. And just keep spreading the frequency and know that it's a frequency war, man. Silent weapons, quiet wars, man. Yo, Seth, take the wheel. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up.